<laughs> I couldn't hold it together being told, I'll finger you, and it starts recording. All right. Take two. Finger. This episode of Designers of the Worst is brought to you by Etsy's Cursed Paintings. Keep your enemies close by trapping their spirits inside these handcrafted artisanal vessels. And be sure to hang them above your bed or near your loved ones for maximum hauntings and possessions. Etsy's Cursed Paintings. Let's spook the show. Welcome to Designers of the Worst, your new least favorite show about an exclusive, wait, ex- uh, exclusively visual medium, cleverly <laughs> brought to you in audio format, and this show is format. Tension breaker had to be done. Wait, what what movie is that from? UHF. Oh, same era ish. Swain's World. Nope. Wait, no, hold on. It's much more Mark Harmon in it than you think. I don't, I don't know right now. <laughs> Summer School. I've never seen it. Oh, it's rad. It's genuinely good. It's like, obviously, it's about kids who got to stay at summer school. <laughs> and their, oh. their teacher, Mark Harmon, I whose take... character's name is Mr. Shoop. He oh, shoop. wears like... Shoop, there it is. It flip-flops, hey. <laughs> First episode As title already. It's, <laughs> it's whoop, there it is. But... The thing I had in my head was um, Shoot by Salt and Pepper. Yep, which is a beautiful song. Uh, I also take back me saying that was Wayne's role. That's an embarrassment for me to say that. Because even... Whoa, it would be an embarrassment. We didn't do anything wrong. The show didn't cut <laughs> out. Again, I think this happened on the NBA one. Uh, you listened to it wrong. So, yeah. Wayne's World. No, the, It's not from the, that. The, it's this movie's called Summer School. Yeah, so it's a uh, it's a motley crew of young bucks, and I think they're in California. Yeah, and they all get picked for summer school. Mark Harmon, who plays Mister Shoop, Shoop, there it is. He, he he gets flagged down by I think his name is Gil. He's like a dickhead vice principal mm-hmm. who's dating Kirstie Alley, who Shoop wants to bone. Shoop, there it is. And then it's just about he's a lazy surfer teacher that doesn't give a shit and there is a character named dave and one named chainsaw and they're obsessed with the, the texas chainsaw <laughs> massacre and feel, uh, it's, it's real good i feel like anybody named gill uh the who should be played by will forte What's guaranteed it? he should time travel deal to, to play yeah uh who's gill Faison? <laughs> i don't know fuck all right never mind uh, let's, yeah. let's spend the next five minutes looking it up. Mm, okay, everybody sit tight. Well, he does that one character. Are you the character that you're thinking of? The guy who reads in the cue cards? Yeah. And or it's the spelling bee guy. And we have to take a short commercial break. Yeah, the, one of them was, uh, I think his, his name's like Danny Calhoun or something. Yes. And he, does, and he does a spelling bee. And then he just says like, Q, Q. <laughs> like nine times and then the entire word he says like 70 letters <laughs> and then uh yeah look it up everybody or uh, if i can find it i'll put it in the show Most of, it'll probably be uh, location blocked if you're in canada i think that's one of the few that you can see because mm. i've looked it up from time to time because it's a pure delight speaking of pure delight yeah. get, get ready for some um <laughs> form of show uh today uh, we are going to be welcoming a guest that I'm married to, and we're going to be talking about burnout, and not sweet ones like you do on your Huffy bike. Yes. Actually, real. no, that's a skid. You do burnouts in cars. Well, it's skids can be people, too. I'm a real gear Depending head. on what year you're from. <laughs> <laughs> I am from that year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, a lot of interesting piercings in 1996. Just confusing terms. Yep. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're talking about burnout today. Um, yeah, because we're we're both uh, off for in a couple weeks or so 
for a vacation, not together, but differently. Yeah. It's separation, separate times. It's important. Different places. We have, we have to learn how to miss each other. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this topic uh, has come up. Uh, that's how usually some of the topics do get picked is that they're relevant to the time period yeah. of what's happening in our lives. Or they're just feel good hit of the summer type of situation. Um, I was going to try and name a hit song for the summer, but I don't know any new songs. So. No, but that's why I said the feel good hit of the summer because that's Queens of the Stone Age song. That is. And that's kind of yeah. where I was going. But like I didn't, a better song. I had the, the, the dismount. I didn't have the landing. Mm. Broken ankle. <laughs> All mount, no finish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a that's a track name. That's a me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're going to get into that in a little while. It should be, I don't know why I said it should be fun. I'm excited because I have like 4,500 stories about being completely fried. Yeah. And so yeah. It's it w- funny, like, I mean, well, I'll save most of it for the time, but everybody has their own idea of what burnout is. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting what people suggest to do. But they almost like, anyways, we'll get to it then. Yeah. And we have a suggestion from a listener that we'll, we'll get into Wonderful. round then as well. Is it a hot dog eating competition type of suggestion? <laughs> that, all that, that would be the worst episode ever. It's just an, two hours of hot dog eating. <laughs> the sounds, On mic? The oh. Or you can just hear us like dipping it in the water and <laughs> stuffing it in our cheeks. Yeah. While we watch Hot Rod. <laughs> Well, eating hot rods. Do you still well, make those? Hot rods, they were oh, the, the uh, knockoffs jerky of... stick, pepperoni? No, yeah, well, they are the knockoffs of the American Slim Jims. Slim Jim. Which... Hey, uh, rest in power, macho man. <laughs> uh, which I used to... I remember buying those uh, hot rods, and they were just 90% salt, 5% fat, and I think 4% cardboard, and 1% meat byproduct. Yeah, they, they were... were tasty. But I remember the the drawing on the side of it had like it was kind of a almost like an Ed Roth, not quite rat finky yeah. thing, but it was like a big headed guy in like a yellow helmet, like racing a dragster. Yeah, it was like PG uh, rat fink. Not yeah. that rat fink isn't like it's not. It's not like his dicks hanging out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, his dicks the shifter. <laughs> See right there, the fact that you thought of it that quickly means it's definitely out there because we just we just went and saw the Deuce days. Yes. Again, uh, not together. <laughs> but ended up there together. And then at your and house later separated. together. Yeah. Uh, and the Deuce Days is a little festival that they put on for people who poop in public. Uh, it's just a line. It's usually of held in <laughs> San Francisco. But uh, <laughs> yeah. this year we, we, we took our shot at the throne. Yeah, they took the show on the road, brought to Victoria. But it's uh, it's a huge show for Deuce cars. I can't remember ex- the exact classification of that. It's like it's the it's 32 a, Ford. Right. That's the, that's, that's the official. The Deuce and Deuce. Like, I think they had 632 Ford hot rods there this year. Yeah. And then I think there's about 900 other cars. So very, a lot of different years. But lot, yeah, the Deuce... Deuce Coupe is uh, primarily just American cars, which it's uh, it, it was interesting yeah. to see the ideas that people had of like where to take the original car because you'd see the original versions of them redone and it was really nice. Yeah. But then you see those chop top, you know, windscreen is an inch high. Yeah, it's yeah, not, it's not built for comfort. No, it's 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 built to look amazing yeah. and drive like shit, but. The cool thing about him and, and the reason I'm super into him and, and have been for a long time is because, like, if you look up Ford 32 uh, Hot Rod, uh, look up Rat Rod, and you'll see just, like, the bare minimum you need to, like, legally be a car. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, like, I wonder if one of the spark plug wires came off. Like, you just look forward because you don't have a hood. You're like, yep, that's it. Like, you could technically fix your car while you're driving it mm-hmm. in one of these things so it's, it's just it's just like it's almost like a bicycle in that it doesn't have a lot of components so it's easy and fun to customize and what i found at, uh during the do stay show too was it's so easy to go too far with one 
because there's not much car there. So you add three custom things and it's like, oh, it's cool. Then yeah. you put like a fourth one on. It's like, whoa, the, like it looks like a fucking garage sale by the time they're done like bolting shit to it. Yeah, some of it was a bit too much. I liked, I personally like the ones that were a bit more, either they were closer to the original or they were just, you know, redone in a minimal fashion. So it wasn't, yeah. so it wasn't made to look flashy, but it wasn't looked to make, make it look like a piece of shit because there's some that were uh almost almost looked like they had a rust paint i I couldn't i I couldn't tell if it was real rust or just like a rust finish so what they'll do um and they find a lot of them in like california arizona texas there's a lot of like like original bodied hot rods on there because they don't rust because they they don't get no rain. So what they'll do is they'll find one with like a gnarly patina on it that just looks perfectly rusty and screwed up. Right. Do a tiny bit of body work on it and then clear coat it. Oh, so really? it'll just freeze that rust in time. Oh. And that's why it kind of looks fake or like a, like a distressed paint job or something because they've clear coated rust. So it always stays that rusty, mm. which is an awesome thing to do. Yeah. It's a really interesting way to do it. And then I found a lot of those cars had, uh, like they had the flannel or like plaid as the seat cover. Yeah. That was a very common theme. So yeah. uh, that must be like the way to do it properly. Yeah. And a lot of them, the ones I like have the um, Mexican blanket seat cover. Yeah. That's why. I, yeah. You know I mean, yeah. Those ones are yeah. super cool. Yeah. There was some, uh, I don't know if you saw the fire truck. Yeah. That yeah. Was, that was some ornate painting on that. Holy shit. Yeah. It was a full, full regulation size old like. Like a 30s or 40s fire truck? I don't know. It was way smaller than a fire truck now. But yeah, like yeah. it was so like so detailed. Yeah. And then uh, there was a red Ford truck as well. That was kind of like a flat front, like yeah. a Volkswagen. That one was awesome. I really yeah. like that one. Um, I was just looking at the Munsters car. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what that was. Wasn't it a hearse? No, it was a custom Model T that they took the frame from. And then they chopped the top off and put... Two rows of seatings. Like oh the, yeah, I'm thinking like of the Adams Hill, family, Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that I, that one does a tour. Like the actual car will go to car shows. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, uh, the Adams family car. It's probably it, a hearse. It must have been a hearse. Yeah, yeah, classic. Uh, uh, I've been. Uh, fr- it's funny, like you go to those shows. Like it's not often I go to a car show, but it was one that like, I'm. I think we're the same in that I would take an old car that's running and yep. has style over, say, a new Lamborghini. Yeah, there's there's like no soul to a lot of the new stuff. And the old stuff is just like, it's still here. It still runs. And like I was saying, because they're so basic structurally yeah, that it's not like the computer goes down or it's like, like you know, the the third spoiler is broken and the carbon mm-hmm. fiber body tub needs to be patched and all that shit because yeah. I hit a wall. Like, there's no, there's not a lot of sensors on it. No, no. And there's actually, um, I'll try and get it to you some internet way. Maybe I uh, know, but there's a really good documentary, uh, for all y'all listening. It's called, uh, flake and flame. Mm. And it's all about the coming up of hot rods with a focus on the paint jobs and the art. Right. So like Rat Fink and Ed Roth and all these crazy like monster rods. And then it goes into like the birth of pinstriping and like I've watched it probably three, four times. And it's just like, it's just mellow. And like it, it talks to American people, it talks to, uh, there's like a big Scandinavian hot rod culture. Did you, did you have it on your, your yeah. iTunes collection? Yeah. Right. That's where I remember seeing the cover of it. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, it might be on the service that we do not speak of, but, uh, yeah, anyone listen, uh, um, check it out. Flake and flame, super worthwhile. If you're even like remotely into cars and you are into design, then it'll be something that you'll likely dig. But one thing I found with going to that show as well is like, I find it when somebody, sometimes somebody will ask you like, what do you like? And you don't know, but you yeah. can easier, it's easier to say like what you don't like and yeah. you build it from there. And that kind of builds up your, preferences and that was something that i went to is like okay this really makes me feel something like seeing these cars yeah so it makes you know like okay i definitely prefer the older cars but these ones these fords are not my my style yeah um i like the larger 
either the large, huge Novas and Chargers. Yeah, of, the muscle car Or uh, there's one car that I've been fascinated for years with, and it's the Datsun 510. Oh, yeah. Four-door. Yeah. And I don't know why it's just this little, you know, peppy, zippy car that, uh, you know, owners of it now will take out the original 90 horsepower engine and throw like a 250 horsepower, like Subaru engine in it or something, something yeah. else. But um, it's oh, yeah. such a, like, got it up on the screen. It, it was funny. The, the missus and I were out for uh, a bite to eat the other day. And Mrs. One, Huxtable. Exactly. And one pulled up right in front of the window oh, yeah. and it was just, it was amazing. If you go to that, like, I don't know, the, the, the blue one there, uh, I'm sorry, the, the one with the dark one. Yeah. yeah. So kind of like the, the racing inspired one. So a little bit lowered, not yeah. with that potato peeler scoop at the front. <laughs> um, but like, it's just got this look about it that I don't know why, but it just, it speaks to me as like, there's n- nothing there that isn't supposed to be there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like it's, it's, there's nothing unnecessary. There's no headrests. Well, not in some of them. Some have bucket seats. Yeah. And you're just fucked if you get hit. But it's just, it's a little car that rips around. It's got, if you lower it, it's got a nice wide wheel base, like a mini. Um, they're great. But either way. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the Datsun stuff is super cool. Like the, the modern day Nissan GTR. Yeah. Which is like, they say it's the best kind of attainable supercar on the planet. Right. Um, like if you if you don't have Ferrari money and all that or whatever it is, um, it's 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 just like it's a gnarly fast car. But it started out in its fifties as um, Datsun Skyline, right? And then over the years, the Skyline got a model, the Skyline GTR, and then it just became the full GTR. And this is the Nis- this is Nissan now. Yeah. So right. Yeah, Nissan was Datsun. So. That reminds me about doing a car show because there's so much shit to talk about. Even like Dats and trucks. Those are on par with, well, I don't want to speak before I get called out or anything, but I feel like they're on par with Toyota trucks, but their models aren't as well versed. Yeah. Like there's not as many models of trucks as there are, but they still, like I always see Dats and trucks around just yeah, kicking it around. Kicking it. Yeah. Shroop, there it is. Um, I sent you something for oh, the show no. and i only found like one really interesting thing this week all right i, I found that i felt like that i felt like sharing because uh and sometimes like, you don't feel like sharing trying to, trying to make it worth it um okay because i have a few trashy things that i so this is more for aspiring artists or doodlers um okay so if you it's basically like uh an animal reference point for for heads. <laughs> it sure as hell is. Right. So if you select, okay, so for select, <gasps> Ooh, uh, select, well, sure, hyena, and then My. the species. Did you say hyena? Hyena. Tortilla. And then if you select the species drop down, yeah. Um, you select cheetah or I don't. They don't have everything that matches up. Yeah. Um. So what I'll try and do is try and match it. So if you rotate it to the side and now hit search again, it'll show you images from try to match oh, that Oh, that's crazy. So on the left, what we have is like a polygon 3D draggable skull of the animal. Mm-hmm. And then to the right, there's just a big, like a, a googly image grid of the animal's head. And you can move the head around the model, hit search, and it'll show you photos of the animal in that position. Yeah, that so if, is crazy. if you move the skull into an, an odd direction, like tilt the front up, well, maybe not that one, but so it's down or it's looking up from the underside. Like, see if there's oh. uh, stuff like that. Well, sure, that one. So that yeah, might not give you as many, but like just for cheetah, you have a bunch of reference points. So I can't remember how I came across this, but if anybody who attempts to draw animals and their head structure, um, that's awesome. It's kind of interesting to see the different angles of the real life thing. That's awesome. Cause like even just having the the catalog of like the three D skulls, because when I have time to draw, I typically like to draw skulls and crap, just because they're easy and I don't usually have a ton of time to draw, so it's easy kind of to detail them out and make like a 
impactful piece without actually spending a lot of time on it. So having all these skulls is rad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's, it, what's this thing even called? Oh, it's in the it's, message. Yeah, it's like some GitHub. It's animal photo art references <laughs> search. Because um, even like the last time I uh, added an animal into an actual production piece, I yeah. had... It was so hard to find the exact reference photos types I was looking for. I just had a big collection of of crow photos just to try and find all the angles I needed to be yeah. like, what does the wing look like? How does the head turn when it's looking this direction? But reference points are, are good to have if you're doing sort of any visual work. Yeah, that, that's uh, crazy. So is this just like an example for what a search could be? Or are these images like usable? They're probably copywritten. Oh, yeah, they are. They're uh, attributed to Flickr and probably some others. But it's just, it's not for, it's literally just for like referencing. As in like, I'm yeah. trying to draw a cheetah head. What does it look like when it's looking this way? Or trying to draw a, a whatever head. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. All right. Well, check out the magical animal head generator at uh, worstdesignshow.com and all of your animal head related troubles will be solved. Yeah, there's a... Um, an ex Disney animator that I follow around on yeah. the internet. Walt and Disney? Yes, his corpse. Rest in power. His Nazi corpse. Um, <laughs> no, just Nazi loving. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and he, he used to, when he worked for Disney, he, like he, uh, I like, I always thought um, when you animated stuff with Disney, you would do the entire like cell, but it was actually, it, it, was broken down into parts. So like yeah. some person, one person would do the character, another person would do the animal. And this guy just did animals. Yeah. So he did, he created the tiger in Aladdin. So he was in charge of animating. Oh, the you t- mean Raja? Correct. And so now he uh, has like free training on YouTube and stuff. Like that. And he sells courses on animal anatomy and how to draw them. Yeah. But he'll show like, he'll go to zoos. Uh, around the world and just sit there with a sketchbook and just study and draw, study and draw, study and draw, just cool. to know how every animal moves so that he can reference it and draw it. So this is like a good start into that. Oh, and what I, did you do? I got, oh, no. as the kids say, belly deep into something. <laughs> That's what they do. No. And nope. I, yeah, so uh, if you can break it like I did, we'll send you a, uh, one of Marcus's T-shirts. Yeah. Um, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> One of my shirts that don't, don't fit anymore. <laughs> they don't fit no more. Yeah, I realized as I said, I was like, that sounds pretty stupid. Speaking of fat New Yorkers. Well, it's not because I'm fat. It's because no. uh, <laughs> I have a taller torso. And so a shirt that's large on me fits great. And then I wash it once and, and now it shows midriff. And Baby. I, I can't handle that. They can never go in the dryer. I've, yeah. Ever. No, I've done that. Yeah, I've done, hang it to dry, cold water, doesn't yeah. matter. So I have to buy, I buy extra tall shirts now. I have so, my suppliers. So I'm a, <laughs> we're both in tall drinks of water. I'm about six, three or four. I don't know. A measurement. I think they measured me when I was born and that was the last time. Um, but I'll show you a trick that I do when I, when I hang dry my shirts. Tight. Oh. Nice and long, forever what? and ever. You hang weights on them? Nope. No, it's not Qigong, it's like which a, is the ancient like art of clip. holding stuff with your dong. If you've never seen that, Kenny versus Benny. I've heard you can stretch your penis out with that. Yeah, it just goes right back, though, <laughs> but it looks crazy when it's all stretched out. It's like when you when, when they're making uh, soba noodles. Yeah. It's that same idea. So you stretch your penis out to a really thin soba noodle. Yeah. <laughs> it's like three feet long, but it's a soba noodle. And if you crop it correctly, you could show... Like a, but then you can fold it and fold it. You could show, uh, well, like origami. <laughs> but if you cropped it properly and showed like um, a classroom of children, uh-huh. they would just wonder, why is that snake trying to swallow that bag of books? It's like, no, no, that's Qi Gong. It's when you tie stuff to the end of your wiener. <laughs> if you haven't seen, everybody just stop listening and go outside and come back and listen or and watch that <laughs> Kenny versus Spenny. <laughs> come back, <laughs> listen to something and cool out. <laughs> Uh, so a lot of people say, um, I can change the world with design. I'll save the world. We can do this together. All these fucking people that never take a chance, never, you know, 
rarely do work that's altruistic, whatever. Like we had Emrys Damon Miller on, I think on, on like our third episode or something mm. like that. And all of his clients are things that do good for the world. He's like the rare person. <clears throat> but <laughs> what this person's done, I saw it this morning um, at the Turning Point USA um, conference or student summit. Um, so Lardass... El Presidente uh, Grande came up Large and he was human Cheeto. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so so he came up um, and he was talking to the, I think they're all teenagers anyway. Uh, directly behind him, there's like a giant presidential seal, and mm-hmm. then there's one off to the left as well, and they're huge. There's like, like is it on a screen? Floor to ceiling, printed? like digital screens. Okay. So what somebody did, and I guess it was an aid to somebody who works within this um, Turning Point USA, which also reminds me, there's a male enlargement pill called Big, Pen- Big Penis USA. Anyway, that's another <laughs> conversation. Um, and that's real. So anyway, they took the presidential seal, uh, if you're familiar with it. They gave the eagle two heads to represent, like, I think it's the oligarchy in Russia. In one of the talons, uh, it's holding a bunch of golf clubs instead of leaves or wheat or whatever that oh does God, normally <laughs> and then in the in the other talon uh, it's holding a, a whole whole bunch of cash and then uh, in the banner above the the eagle's double heads in spanish it says 45 is a puppet what's it supposed to say up there <laughs> like e pluribus unum or I don't oh, know, yeah, yeah. whatever they said on national treasure All right. um Nicholas but Cage. Oh, oh, high praise it says um, it says face off in spanish yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so apparently this stayed up the entire time. No one in the White House staff noticed. No one uh, in this Turning Point USA noticed that was willing to do anything about it. And this designer's the true hero. They got fired for this, and rightly so. They completely uh-huh. fucked themselves out of the job. But in a, it's like in that scene in Half Baked when the the guy quits like the fast food place. <laughs> right. And he fuck goes, you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm out. It's just like that. So. <laughs> Blaze of Glory designer, we salute you for uh, just do, just just doing it for the because it's going to be awesome. This is his or her, uh, which em- is fine nowadays. It's, mm-hmm. it's totally okay. Everybody, just calm down. Uh, <laughs> is there M and M moment? If you had one shot and you you're eating mom spaghetti, <laughs> I pictured the candy first. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, if you had one. Mm, M&M's. Yeah. Uh, yeah it tastes like spaghetti. He had, uh, or, or they had one opportunity in their life to do something rebellious. And they're like, I only design stuff. And they were, they've tasked me with putting the stupid slide up. It's like, this is my moment to get fired yeah. for an amazing thing they remembered by. Yeah. Like, I would, if I had the opportunity, I would take that opportunity. Oh, it would be great. Yeah. Like, be that, like, yeah, sure, you'll get fired if you get caught. Uh, but then you can just walk around with that resume and be like, Hey, just go to any liberal democratic majority state and be like, Hey, I was the one that did that kind of a job. And like, sure. But also the fact that nobody noticed, I think speaks to the work. So if you go to the, go to our website and, and check out the, the post I'll put up. Um, but they did a nice job. Like it looks real until you look closely at it. So well, it makes they did you, a good enough job where nobody noticed, but also they included a bunch of other shit in it, which is well, it also I think is good work. It also shows that the general public doesn't know what the seal actually looks like. No, in Canada we have lots of seals. It's like a slippery dog with no arms. We have uh, we have many seals uh, and seal lions. <laughs> and uh, that's a stretch. They all enjoy a uh, kiss. From yeah, because if if you if you ever had this in front of you plus that walking talking Cheeto, yeah, um, yeah, you you would you'd be paying more attention to him than the seal behind him. Yeah, but it's amazing. That's great. That's going to be on shirts tomorrow. Oh, goddamn! Better guarantee be. it. Yeah. So whoever you are, if you're listening, uh, designers are the worst at Gmail. We'll Skype you, and you're gonna have. Um, Less fame than you deserve by being on this show, which is a very small amount. You'll reach an audience of two people. Speaking of reaching audiences of people, this is an, I want to talk about another, it's like a Twitter thread moment thing that went up uh, a while back. It's about podcasters complaining that 
the people that listen don't appreciate what they do. Huh? So they're saying, we pay for this out of our own pocket. We spend, you know... We as in you and I. Well, I'm not... No, like, the people talking in the article, they're saying, like, all this stuff is likely true for us, but I just don't give a shit. So they're saying, like, um, most people are naive about how hard podcasting is. Now, first of all, I'm going to raise a hand and say, I looked about... I watched YouTube videos for about three hours and then I bought a bunch of crap and I built some stuff and then it was done. It wasn't hard at all. <laughs> Have you worked in a welding shop? That shit's hard. This is easy. Yeah, I mean, I get the the investigation uh, yeah. portion of the podcast. Like if it's actual, you're doing, you know, t- 12 episodes series and each episode is two hours long full of research and interviews with people. That I get. Like that does take effort. That's well, it, that's journalism. That's investigative reporting. It is. And you should be doing that for what's a show? Not hard Dateline. copy. There you go. Dateline. Hard copy was a show. It had the With lesser the turning yeah, go typewriter. Go, 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 go. Oh wait. I'm thinking of something else. Did you redo? No. <laughs> <laughs> something. Yeah. Uh thinking of a did you redo. But yeah, uh, yeah. So but what we do is just the dog and pony show for Which for is, fun. The plug and play, how do you do? But I think people who might be uh, upset by this are looking out for an out as like, I need to get paid for this. Yeah. Somewhere down in this thread, and it, it goes on and on. You can look at the link in the show page. Um, but some people are complaining that like, we put a lot of thought into it and we have a really great idea and we've released like a dozen episodes and I can't believe we're not making money yet. That's not how it works though. It sure as shit don't. I mean, all these people that are doing it to make money, Mm -hmm. it's it's over, man. Like, just do something good. And if somebody with money is like, "Hey, we like that. Do you want to be part of our network or whatever?" Be like, "Rad," or "No," or whatever, or or put it on Patreon, yeah, which charge people five dollars a month uh, for like four shows, and then make money that way. A lot of the podcasts I used to listen to or currently listen to when I have time is they didn't start as like, this is our career now. They were always doing something before and that was their primary thing. So like some were writers for an online publication that did this on the side. Some are actors and actresses who comedians who do this on the side, but it's turned into something, but that was not their goal. They no. just want to have fun and laugh and get more stuff of theirs out there. Like, Well, the reason that I wanted to do it it's because you just work in this little bubble all the time and then you just go home and that's it. Like you never, you never talk about it with other people because everyone's too busy getting the work done. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, I listen to podcasts like all day. Like there's probably 10 that I listen to and that's, that's quite a bit of them. I go back and listen to old ones and stuff like that. But like I enjoy knowing more about a thing. Yeah. Or laughing at just like stupid shit like Hollywood Handbook or Comedy Bang Bang mm-hmm. or like the new Conan podcast. It's great. It's over now. Yeah. The last, the well, season one's over. Oh, I thought it was over, over. Yeah. The last one I just listened to today with Julia Louis Dreyfus. Yeah. Gnarly. And so, anyway, these people in this Twitter moment all saying like, um, we're not appreciated and people don't get all the hard work that goes into it and all that. And my first reaction was, motherfucker, this thing's optional. <laughs> yeah, th- that's exactly it. It's so, free. Like, it's, f- it's free to put out. I can't put out a free TV show on NBC. No. I can put out a free show on YouTube. YouTube. And, and we do. Oh, yeah, we do. But It's just the, our logo with the episode playing. <laughs> like, it counts as a show. At, n- at no point. During this whole experience, have we had a conversation to discuss financials and be like, okay, what's our game plan for quarter three of our sponsorships? We have zero sponsors. We've never been sold. We haven't seen a dime. D1. <laughs> we ain't seen D1. And I, I hope we never do because fucking whatever. Then it turns into like a gig. I got one of those already, man. I, I don't need... A financially motivated you don't, thing. You don't want to be accountable to another entity for something that, you know, at any point you're like, ah, we're done with this. Yeah. Or it's like, I want to say 
something stupid and not offend a sponsor. Nope. That's not us. But yeah, if you do want to sponsor the show, let us know at <laughs> designers of the worst at gmail.com. We'll, we'll talk, we will do whatever you want to your product or it, put it in us or whatever it's going to be. Uh, we just don't want any money. We just give us uh, yeah. things to play with. This and, is weird. And here's, we here's, here's money to talk about a product that you don't use. Yeah, like there's no way a lot of the people that run the podcasts I listen to actually use LegalZoom because I don't think they actually mail anything because they work for podcast networks that have merchandise stores that ship shit out anyway. Yeah. So think about the last time you were at a post office and then think about the last time somebody 12 times richer than you was at a post office and it gets less and less likely. The other thing with those, those sponsors, like the actual ads on them, like everybody skips them. Yeah. Like nobody sh- listens to them. Nobody wants, it's just like a commercial on TV. You don't want to yep. see it. It's just like, that has nothing to do with me. And I mean, I've never personally used a promo code to buy something. I have. Well, if fucking. Uh, well, fucking. Um, I've bought one thing that I can remember. and it, 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 <laughs> Personalized condoms. Yep. I got a Stevie Wonder's face on them. <laughs> it's not like it's going to say, hey, look out, because he's blind. So it's like he's there. It's a cool driving. Don't put me in there. I'm Stevie Wonder. He doesn't know where he is. Um, according to a tabloid cover, he has seven months to live. Oh, because of his. So. Uh, braids? No, his kidney. Oh. I think he's gone in for a kidney transplant. Or maybe he has kidney failure. Well, I wish him well in that I don't wish him any direct harm. <laughs> so, this episode is brought to you by Downers. <laughs> by Stevie Wonder's uh, last summer. <laughs> so, <laughs> live it up. <laughs> so, final final opinion on this. I get the the hard work but it's like say you have a business you invest as much money as possible on the business itself you get uniforms you you buy a store you buy everything and then on top of that you uh i don't know do something you start doing something else that costs money i can't think of anything right now (laughs) But at <laughs> at no point do you have a single customer. Yeah. Then like build something up from it. Yeah. Or also figure out what the why you're why did you start doing a podcast to begin with? And if it's if it's the goal to make money, then I think you're wrong. Then because just be a realtor and go away. Yeah, because currently, like right now, it's so. You know, as a kid, I played uh, quite a number of uh, video games, and. After a while, my parents just stopped asking me to go outside. Yeah. Because they just like, hey, he's going to play them. And then it, it brought me to what I do now in terms of like dealing with computers all the time. And anyways, um, but, you know, now it's a time where people can play games online and make money because there's networks to support that, that you sign up and you get on there and then you can uh, monetize your video. But there's no network where you can monetize your podcast. You can't like, oh, this ad supports that podcast you're listening to right now. There's nothing out there that's like that. Yeah. And until that, there's a time for that, it'll, it won't happen. Like it, it cannot be the option. Yeah, there's a few paid services. Like the commercials, super annoying. So I have a Stitcher premium account yeah. and, I, and I pay one Patreon for, for a podcast and there's just no ads and, and right. all that. And everything on Stitcher premium is no ads. Um. But if you go into YouTube, watch a video, there's ads before. Yeah. And those, that money will go towards the creator. Yeah. But there's nothing, there's no like free thing that you can go that pays money. Anyways, until that happens, like this will always be an issue for people. Yeah. And fucking whatever. Like if you're getting it into it now, hoping that you're going to get rich, like that, that time is gone. Like, What's this one like here? Legitimate people are starting them now. Like, it's it's crazy. Like when Conan O'Brien has a free podcast because he just wants to talk to people. What do you think? Like Rick in Springfield is going to be like? Oh, yeah, I I uh, I find a very echoey room and then I refinish a boat while yelling at a microphone from twelve feet away. Like, just do it because it's fun. Like, I don't know. It's 
it's fun for me and it really bummed me out when people weren't were feeling unappreciated because because nobody asked you to do it and if you did a good one they would say hey we appreciate it i tell people to not listen <laughs> yeah oh i like oh please please don't plenty of people <laughs> i've told in the moment when i'm like oh yeah well i do a podcast and th- and then i'm like no they're like what's oh. it called i was like ah, don't worry about it you like american history x yeah it's a the tribute real. to ed norton's character <laughs> it's it's, it's called Curb Stomp FM and we just sit around in our boxers and watch the movie on every episode. Yeah, the end. Yeah, and that is uh oh, but that reminds me, I uh, I do want to do an episode at some point, and um, I've identified a few other design podcasts, like short short ones. Oh yeah, that we can listen to during the show and critique them and see if we're better or worse. And I think we'll probably be in the middle gauging by uh, the samples that I listen to. Right. Can you can you scroll for just one sec? Is there's just the one here that says the normal cost of a 15-minute long story at a major storytelling podcast. Two like, months, six yeah. pre-interviews, three interviews, seven hours of tape. Okay, so this thing is tape. Uh, Ten drafts, two to four edits, each one to four hours long, with two to five editors in the room at each time, two days of mixing scoring. So I think this is for something like an investigative like cereal sure. or something like that. Sure, but there, the, that's the whole thing. It's like, well, then put it on Patreon. Yeah, put it behind a paywall if you, till you get or like, um, pitch it to other podcast networks. Yeah, with your numbers of followers because that's what they're looking for. They're not just like, yeah, yeah. It's, the it's, only reason that this show is not on Patreon is because nobody would listen. No, I, it's interesting. Uh, it's. For some, I bet you it's this weird sense of entitlement of look what I made now yeah. give me money. Look, I figured it out. Like, yeah. like I figured it out and I eat with a, the fork in my right hand, but when I have to cut something, I switch it to my left hand and put my knife in my right hand. Watching me eat is like watching an idiot eat. And I figured out how to make a podcast. I do that as well. Yeah. And I I'm right handed. I can't, I can't, I can cut with my right hand and then I eat with the right hand. Yeah. And I have to switch. Yeah. I cannot, the left hand does not use a knife properly. I can't translate it. I bet you if you started cutting with a knife like to prep food yeah. with your left hand, it would, f- oh, you- it would figure out. But I prep food with my right hand. Yeah. This is really interesting. Weird. Hmm. There you I go. I wonder if that's a class thing. <laughs> like low class? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> middle, middle to low, <laughs> upper class people can figure it out. Also, the differences between spoons. Speaking of spoons and precious <laughs> metals, and then the Olympics, and then gold medals, uh, I found this thing. What Actually, a segue! There was video unavailable. Yeah, I didn't want to do the video anyway. So thanks anyway, Olympic Committee. You fucking sons. Uh, but anyway, I guess in 2017, the Tokyo. 2017, sorry, it was rumored that the Tokyo um, Olympic medals would be made from recycled devices like smartphones and and tablets and all that. So what they did is um, if you go to the show page at worstdesignshow.com, you can see what uh, the the link we have. But like this surrounding area, that's all from recycled phones and tablets. I'll I'll let you f- yeah. yeah I want to talk about something after this but all right if you can see it uh, then you'll know um that's really interesting have you have you actually seen the the Tokyo 2020 Olympic logo I think so yeah I think I actually kind of liked it it's uh it's a little fun fun thing it's a beauty it's just 2020 in like ring uh fashion that's definitely oh it's the the one. Yeah, that? that one. Oh, that's cool. Uh, is this? T- oh, sorry. I guess that this was an unofficial one. That's why. Oh, <laughs> that's why it was original. better. Um, oh, see, I thought the one left with the rings was the official one. I was like, I like that. That's that totally is really. It just makes sense. It would be something that you do be like, oh, that was easy. But it also, in a way, I don't know if the Olympics would let you mess with their logo by putting the uh, rising sun. In the no. far right. Uh, no. No. But, uh, yeah. So let's go back to those medals. So what happened was they put out a call. Um, 
for everyone to donate old devices so they could harvest like the precious metals out of them and use them to make the Olympic medals of. So all 5,000 Tokyo 2020 medals have been manufactured from recycled smartphones and small electronic devices that were donated by the public between April 2017 and March 2019. More than 78,000 tons of used mobile phones and other gadgets were collected by authorities with a total of 6.21 million used mobile phones handled, handed in at collection centers. I wonder if you don't get gold, silver, bronze, and you get like the remaining, it's just a plastic metal. Oh, it's just, it says like Nokia on there. <laughs> so yeah, you get an old phone. What they got was... Uh, Altogether, these yielded 32 kilograms of gold. So that's like 70 pounds. Uh, 3,500 kilograms of silver and 2,200 kilograms of bronze. That's pretty good. It's weird that they're like, oh, let's just use old phones. But it's awesome because they actually use it for something. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I assume they threw the rest of it away. They, the metals themselves do have value to the yeah. winner. It's not a ton of value, but I think they're... I th- off the top of my head, I think they're 500 bucks each. At least that's what the Vancouver ones were, I think. Yeah. I don't think they were over 1000 When you tried to sell yours? Sorry. So so what I started laughing at was on the right. This is the Ripple Masturbation Suit. Offers, offers sex aid to people with and I just And I just didn't know what a Ripple <laughs> Masturbation Suit was. Well. We're going on this journey. Curiosity killed the masturbating cat. Ripple, your sex experience has no limit. This All is, right. Yeah, uh, this is very long. This it is was, almost like that uh, that coffee mug uh, video you sent me. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was really <laughs> okay. So the the clothes and facial mask and a remote control. Oh, it's like a suit you wear, and as a remote control, when you pleasure your intimate areas, it like massages and vibrates you or something i think it's supposed to represent or not represent <laughs> the air cushions provide two kinds of tactile f- feeling for different needs so i think what it does is it just inflates in certain areas with little mini pockets to simulate uh, oh to simulate human touch there's a hand. wang hole no it's not a wang hole <laughs> it's it's like a <laughs> It's like a diaper. It tucks back. <laughs> <laughs> I That's like, stupid. Like, they wouldn't cut a hole in it for your wang. It's like a diaper. I like how it has pockets. <laughs> but look, it looks like a face. For your it phone. Look, it looks like a very surprised face. Like, the suit just became sentient. Like, <laughs> what are you doing in me? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so... I, hope, I really hope this music makes it into the episode that we can make. Oh, yeah. Today, on Adventure's Journey to Space and Time. All right, how to? All right, I gotta watch the how to use. So first, first caregivers uh, help put on the clothes. Okay, I'm just I'll, gonna pause for one second. Caregiver, is this for people that can't move? Yeah, are we? That's, well, that's what we are missing. Wait, it's aid for people with disabilities. Do you remember that movie Monkey Shines? <laughs> that dude was a quadriplegic, and he had that monkey that he had a mind meld with, and the monkey would kill people, and he could see it through his head, <laughs> but he couldn't get out of his bed to stop it. There's one scene when a lady jerks <laughs> him off, and I think that that was the inspiration for the Ripple masturbation suit. <laughs> Let's keep watching. <laughs> Ew, smell. <laughs> it works to make all the senses include touch, touch, sight, sound, and smell. Why would you want to simulate smell? So after the suit's on, the caregiver leaves the room from the receiver. They can adjust this after every. Oh, but you just know they have to come back in with like a uh, like a dish towel to to just make it go away. So the caregiver is now not only just like helping you live, but now has to clean up your body excretions after you've used the suit and be like, what do I do with the suit now? Was like Just power wash it. Was it Randall in the first Clerks movie when he called it Jizz Mopper? That's, that's it. Jizz Mopper to Nudie Booth. All right. Well, thank you, Olympics, for bringing us to the Ripple Masturbation Suit. <laughs> that was stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um... One more thing to go uh, before we take a break, and that is your favorite. King's Corner. King's Corner. I think this week I called it King Shit with Jerry King. All right. If you're not familiar with this segment, it's a longtime favorite of four episodes. 
<laughs> where there's a um, hearkening all the way back to four episodes in the come. beginning. Uh, there was at King Cartoons on Twitter, and he brought light to my life. Um, I've hated this man for a long time. I've I've hated his work. He may be a pleasant man. I just assume he, I would hate him as well because he makes a lot of work that I really really dislike. Um, but he makes a lot of cartoons about strictly about like web design and the most cliche horse shit you've ever heard. And it's it's one of the the few pleasures in life that I get, um, which is sharing them with others. This this gives me uh, anxiety. Yep. Good. Every week. All right. So should I should I not look until you have it nope. ready? I got fancy this week. <laughs> You've got it set up. All right. So we're gonna bring it up, and Marcus is gonna paint you a word picture. See what I did? Yeah. You do. Did you? Oh, you removed the, yes. the text. Yes. Oh. I'm gonna do that every week now. All right. So we have three people standing in a cornerless office. <laughs> oh, that is it's, it's kind of curved you like can tell an airport it's or something it, but uh and there's one gentleman at the keyboard again and i literally cannot tell if those are his feet or his knees because they're a different shade than his face and we know from last week's episode the man does not know what hands look like <laughs> or a keyboard it's got five keys yeah it looks like a burnt <laughs> flatbread from it's, like some shitty chain restaurant. So he's got three people, uh, one person sitting at a desk in front of just the monitor. It's weird that he puts so much detail into the back of the monitor, but leaves it out. Like he puts ports. Yeah, but no cables. Well, there is a cable attached to nothing. And then uh, so it looks like he's stoned at the computer. And then there's a, uh, a, a female and a male standing there. And they're both saying something at the same time. And... No, I'm just waiting for the speech bubbles. What do you think they're saying? I legitimately have no idea. First of all, pretend you're an idiot, and now think about it. Uh, it's something about white space. <laughs> it might as well be. Let's 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 take a look at what we got. So the gentleman at the computer says, "The colors, the colors." The lady says, "He must love the colors I used." And the guy by Sanders said, actually, he just ate a mushroom from the yard, so he's tripping. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> he's high, well, man. Well, um, I did say he looked stoned. Yeah. Like, maybe he was uh, he was out of it. Bingo, bango. So I was right. So, on that note, he wins. But in terms of content, it's garbage. King loses again. It's oh, I watched a coworker eat a magic mushroom from from the yard, the office yard, <laughs> the office yard. So he's tripping, and oh. we're all fine with the fact that he's doing psychedelics at work. <laughs> Better have him get back to that client work. But also, Jerry King, the Honorable King, shit li- lives in a world where, and this is like prevalent in a lot of his pieces, where there will be a person working at their desk. And other coworkers are standing in that person's office talking about that person and looking at what they're Within doing. Within like three feet of yeah. them. Most okay. of them aren't on hallucinogenics. Most of them are just working away, ignoring two people in his room having a conversation about him. And also I noticed very few lady designers. Hmm. Fucking shame, shame, Jerry. Shame, shame. It's 2019. Yep. Almost had to think about that. <laughs> It's you it's know, way over two thousand. Time, times are jer- or, oh Jesus. Times Time are changing. Time jer- 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 change. So uh, yeah, <sighs> another delightful installment from our friend Jerry King. Thank you, Jerry at King Cartoons on Twitter. Uh, Jerry, if you listen to this, uh, I'm not sorry, and we do want to talk I, to you. I just don't understand why he puts detail <laughs> into a notepad <laughs> that has nothing to do with the scene, but yet cannot draw a hand. He skipped that day at art school. Wow. Those those hands look like peanut butter cookies when they press the top with a fork. But are those the hands? Because the other two characters, their hands are smaller than their eyes. One's an amputee who looks like they lost their hand in a pencil sharpener because their wrist is sharp as hell. <laughs> they could use the ripple suit. It looks like it's uh, the end of a burnt stick. Uh, That's a person for that jerk-off suit, though. 
The guy doesn't have hands. <laughs> He's got uh, match heads. But <laughs> this is what I can't figure out. Are those shoes or are those hands? They are a different color than his Are those face. knees? Like, I, I, I think, think they're knees. I'm going to go with knees. And I think he attempted to draw a crease on the left knee. But also an interesting choice using the same color as the top of the desk. And no toilet in this one, so. All right. Well, <laughs> Jerry King, we love you. Hold on. Oh, wait a second. There's something that's really bugging me now. So in the corners of the laptop or the monitor and the corner of the desk, there's weird colors showing through. Are those mistakes of what the background was? Are you accusing Jerry King of making mistakes? As far as I can, like this man bats a thousand. But yes, it looks like some hastily shit cut out something from MS Paint. And yeah, thank you very much, Jerry. A pleasure as always. And when we come back, we are going to talk about being burnt the hell out. Of Part Jerry up. King stuff. <laughs> Mankind has been forced to compete for survival. This spirit of competition has reached a pinnacle in the relationship of two best friends who battle against each other. Why? Glory for the winner. Humiliation for the loser. This is Kenny versus Spenny. All right, the competition this week was created by the Shaolin monks. It is called Qigong, the ancient art of weightlifting with your penis. What the fuck's your problem? <laughs> you fucking green. Let's go. What? Great, another great show. That's fun. What is your fucking problem today? What? what? Don't tell me to fuck off. Thank you for enjoying that break, if you enjoyed that break. Um, I, wonder, I wonder what audio we put in. It's probably great. L- last last <laughs> episode, we put in uh, Drunk Orson Welles. Oh. And then after that, we put in the scene from The Shining when he's going to kill her with a baseball bat. So Right. But it was Jim Carrey, so it was different. So it was funny. Yeah. He makes <laughs> disposal abuse funny. <laughs> he had on his mask. Yeah. Uh. And hey, nobody stopped him. It's true. He begged us to. Somebody, stop me. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Yay. Oh, that's a bad. Welcome back. No, nope. that's, yeah, bad reaction to my good joke. Um, uh, I've so been watching the Comedians in Cars <clears throat> Getting Coffee, the new season. Yeah. And it's a really great season. We only watched the Seth Rogen one mm-hmm. so far. Oh. Um, because we, Ryan falls asleep when we watch something at night, so it's hard to get through anything that we both want to watch. No as much as I used to. I just have, like, I keep human hours now, I would say, and I didn't used to. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I keep human <laughs> hours. I sleep one of your earth nights. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for the sharp eared listener, they can tell that my human wife, who is real, <laughs> and who does love me, even though she won't say it on the air, um, Ryan is with us, so please welcome yourself. I'm feeling a lot of pressure to say that I love you right now. Do you? <laughs> Hello. Get a room, you two. Mm. We do. It's our bedroom. Great. <laughs> we, t- we take care of our kids. So, <laughs> solving the world's problems one <laughs> loud statement thing. at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of something, mm. uh, we wanted to get Ryan's reaction to the Jerry King debacle. Mm-hmm. Uh, fresh set of eyes. Maybe there's a chance that Marcus and I are wrong, and this is genuinely good. So <laughs> if you can quickly describe to the good listeners what you see, we got... Marcus's interpretation. Um, okay. It's an office environment. Um, oh, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> now I can't decide if it's like an interracial couple and they're like Rapscallion's son or if it is a work thing. Oh, you're adjusting. Nope, you're good. Keep on. I'm good. Okay, I'm going to say that it's um, this guy... Is showing, oh, it's like an, it, I think it's like one of those dream within a dream inception things. And so they're looking on their screen at exactly what we're seeing right now. 
Wow. That's, what, that's what I see. <laughs> that, Stay in school, kids. I'm really tired. <laughs> I've been working nonstop for about 12 yeah. days now. Yeah. That's what I see. Life <laughs> is hard, kids. <laughs> you ever seen a $1 bill, man? <laughs> You look behind the behind Red the hedges. Go, <laughs> John I Stewart. What's he doing? I don't know. <laughs> so uh, okay, well we. I was close though, right? Well, we just let that float by as if it was a thing Aww. that made sense. Um, these all have to do with like web design and stuff. Okay, well he designed a website that does that then. <laughs> Fair and enough. That's what they're looking uh-huh. at. All right, uh-huh. so here uh-huh. is the, the text. The colors, the colors. He must love the colors I used. Actually, he ate a mu- he, he ate a mushroom from the yard, so he's stripping. I was pretty close. Like, but was, was w- pretty what close. office has a yard? <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, you worked at one with a garden before. No, it was gravel. Well, <laughs> you brought home vegetables. He ate from a the mushroom not from there. From the gravel pit. Oh, they build a thing. Anyway, so it's interesting that you. What was your first statement? You said it looks like an interracial couple. Well, I don't want to. Which is really says something about you. It does. <laughs> I <laughs> whereas, wish we could edit that. Whereas out. I said it looks like a cornerless office. Oh. <laughs> I guess Marx doesn't see color. Yeah. Like the Oval Office. It's a cornerless. It is a cornerless office. It oh, is. Don't look at me like that. That's, That's why it's called the Oval Office. There's no corners. They're just big bendy corners. Yeah. All the doors are round or they're. So curved. you think this is a political cartoon then? It's a statement. It is now. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's a, a a designer in the White House. Okay. And there's magic mushrooms growing out into the White House yard or lawn. They they must call it a yard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. The longer I'm reading it, oh, this is the beauty of them. It's yeah, making me angry. They get better. And oh, I, I don't know why I'm. That means it's way. working. <laughs> why? <laughs> All right. So Jerry yeah. King, once again, I, I get served champion. these weekly, and they make me angry as time goes on. When you look, like if you pay attention to the details or lack of details mm-hmm. that he's added, ports for the monitor, no cables. Oh. Uh, five keys on the keyboard, details on a notepad, but can't he, can't address hands. He can't figure that. <laughs> well, he's handled them on the keyboard. No, those are his knees. We can't figure out what they are. Are those <gasps> the bottom of his shoes? His trousers. knees? I, yeah. Trousers. Or, well, they, Maybe could, those are corduroy pants. It could be I think that's cre- what they are. Yeah, I think it's creases in his knees or else it's fingers. I think that is his best attempt. The only thing that separates us from him is a thin layer of gabardine. Jerry Seinfeld, Kramer, oh, yeah. going commando, going commando, yay! <laughs> Sharing he's a brain, and he's loving it. <laughs> I'm out there, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, speaking of somebody that never experiences burnout, Kramer. Uh, yeah, he did. He experienced it's burnout with Kenny. St- Kenny, Kenny Rogers, Kenny Rogers, chicken, roasters. Yeah, uh, the red light, and he's then freaking Jerry, out. Uh, experienced it as well. Yeah. Um. But we we're talking about burnout. <clears throat> yeah, like mm-hmm. the the kind that um, it doesn't come from a giant neon chicken light. It's it comes from work. It's more of a creative burnout that yeah. Um, when you're under a constant, not constant demand, but constant asking uh, to be creative. Yeah. Um, on timelines and many other considerations what it does to your uh, psyche over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I wanted to get into a few things with everybody just as like a basic kind of like a litmus test because I have my own thoughts on it. Um, Like Ryan, right now you're, it's a very busy time for you at work. It is. It is busy, but I I was thinking about this earlier today and talking about it with our son um, it was just we share a, a son. We do share. We share several sons. My son. Well, a yeah. couple of them. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not my son. No, I, I don't share any sons with you. <laughs> Marcus again with a killer Bruno impression. <laughs> <laughs> we know Borat. Yeah, I know. All right, I see what you did there. You made a joke of my joke. <laughs> Hashtag Wayne's World, everybody. <laughs> yep. Joke within a joke. Inception. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> burnout. Um, you were having a very busy time. Yeah, I didn't finish. Yeah, but so I was talking about that with Ashton. And so um, there's, I think burnout happens for a number of reasons. But if I look at where I am this July, as opposed to where I was last July, I'm equally busy, if not more busy in my job 
this year, but I don't really feel burnt out. I feel yeah. tired and I feel stimulated and I feel really proud of the work I've done with the people that I work with and I'm really happy. Um, whereas when I was at a different point, it was just stress. And, and I think when you get burnt out or really, really busy and it's stressful, that is when burnout happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when, and I want to know from both of you, um, when do you know you're getting burnt out? Like, what's like a sign that's like, oh no, I'm I'm starting to go downhill. Do you do you want to go first? I would say um, procrastination. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm a, I'm prone to procrastination anyway, but I, it definitely rears up pretty pretty hard when I'm close to burnout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really know I had signs that told me that was happening until I started yeah. reading some articles before this episode. Mm. Um, and identifying then one, things within yourself. I really just had to look inside. Uh, and My butthole. A, a couple of them were like, you're, t- you're tired no matter how much sleep you get. And so yeah. like for the past few days, I've been working, putting in like 10, 10 or so hours a day on like project work trying to get everything done because there's so much happening yeah like one day i'll finish up go to bed wake up five hours later go back to work and start all over again Mm -hmm. and the next day i finish early and i get like nine hours sleep and i wake up and i'm still tired and so that's one of the things that somebody uh, addresses like you're you're constantly tired um the other one was your uh, temperamental, which I mm-hmm. realized the other day I was at Whole Foods with the spouse and I just went off on this really, really angry rant about Andrew Shear <laughs> and his <laughs> lobbying for the milk and, and beef industry and how <laughs> I, I agree with that, this, though. questioning that chocolate milk saved his son's life and I started losing it and I just realized I was getting really, really, really <laughs> angry for no reason. I do want to circle back on that, though. Yeah. What? Chocolate milk. So Andrew Shear, the leader of the Conservative Party mm-hmm. of Canada, said that if they're elected in the fall, that they're going to absolutely um, go over the or redo the Canadian Nutrition Guide mm-hmm. that was just put out. And it's awesome now. Yeah. And so basically they're saying he went on to tell a story that it's basically chocolate milk. Chocolate milk saved his son's life. And it's basically because he's lobbying for the dairy industry yeah. and the yeah. meat industry. Um, big, that's, which, that's big teat. That's also which, lazy parenting because his kid, is he saying his kid was finicky? And yes. Only, yeah. yeah. That's just lazy but parenting. It's, it's, yeah, that's it's, just a shithead of a parent. It's <laughs> also They'll lo- drink water before they die. Exactly. So I got mad because it was lobbying to an industry that's not sustainable and can't keep going forever. And two, it was uh, you know, on the backs of... Uh, baby boomer votes, Mm -hmm. which are always like always stuck in that mindset. And so I just got really angry because I have relatives and have family that think that way. Um, So I'm just going to jump in real quick. If you're ever behind (laughs) an old person in line at the grocery store and they're only buying like three items, guaranteed one of them's pork and one of them's cream. And the (laughs) other one is like maybe an onion or like an insure, but they love Dairy and pork. He's right. He, he made this observation, and he's absolutely right. But I have to say, um, your version of flying off the handle and being temperamental <laughs> is a little <laughs> different than mine because I definitely react the same way. But I get mad if people come into the living room or like I wake up yep. if I wake up at like eight minutes before the alarm goes. That's what I get go on a rant about. So, yeah, yeah. There's different levels of temperamentality. Yeah. So, uh, like. But I thought that was just me in a like a, a funk of mm-hmm. mood. Um, dairy funk. And not, yeah, a dairy stink. And then not, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not related to work at all. Because mm-hmm. um, right now it's, it's like really busy and my mind's just constantly racing of, of things to do. But at the same time, I always make sure that I always have like that, okay, I'm off work. And so I always make sure I have that separation, but still like it builds up mm-hmm. where you have this like like condensed, compressed anger and everything that's happening. And then once you get home and you're in a comfort, comfort zone mm-hmm. and safety area with your spouse or whoever, 
then unfortunately without even asking like hey do you mind if i rant for the next 30 minutes you yeah. just unleash yeah. and you're like ah, i'm sorry i just put that on you we are bad for that we do that at lunch because we work just a block away from each other so it's like we take turns being like this is what happened so far in the day and just yeah no. rant but I, but I enjoy think having. We're lucky because we work in the same industry. Sorry for interrupting. Whereas if you w- your spouse is in a different industry, it makes it a bit more difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The um, the good thing about the working near each other and, and the the venting at lunch and all that is that if you are having like an absolute shit morning, and then we'll go for a walk and we'll get some to eat and whatever, and we just like we talk about it, and then it's like, oh, I don't have to carry as much of that back to work right now. Mm-hmm. But if it's just like. If Ryan didn't work downtown, I would just like go angrily stand outside for an hour and then come back in and be like, all right, might as well do more of this bullshit. But yeah. it's it's nice to it get it out whenever you can. Yeah. So it, it's a it's a real thing. And it's funny, like in looking for uh, kind of reference points on this topic, I found a lot of <laughs> articles from 2017 to now. Like mm. it only seems like it's a real talked about thing within the past couple of years which is interesting but i couldn't find a lot of older old articles and is this old yeah it's 2017 so it's it's yeah it's not that bad um i got i found one that um well i found two clips that we can get into yes sorry we were we're just looking at uh another thing Mm -hmm. before you got here and then on the right there was like a link to a a rippling (laughs) masturbation suit for handicapped people so like your caregiver <laughs> slips you into a suit and there's a remote and then like air pockets mas- massage your wang or your lady wang mm-hmm. um, until you're done. Okay. And then uh, the jizz mopper comes in <laughs> and it got, you got to sterilize that suit. And yeah. So um, your phone's finally started listening to you and providing the guidance, yeah. the much needed guidance <laughs> that I've, I've always Curated required in content. my life. Yeah. No. no. Uh, so for like, Telltale signs, um, for me, it's always like you feel anxious all the time. You feel like you're getting nothing done, even though you're working constantly. Right. And then I just stop wanting to reply to email. Like any kind of communication, I'm just like, I I know. So with me, I have a personal email account. I, I think last time, like Ryan, I think your dad sent me. Oh, no, don't. But this is like a decade ago. It was like a <laughs> oh, no, German no. lady Christmas card with like her <laughs> boobies out or something. It was a forward, 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 forward. No, it was a look what I found. And I'm sending <laughs> it to you. This was not sent to me. Right. And then uh, I think that's the last time I got like a personal email. It's really- so anytime I get an email, I know it's somebody wanting something. Right. So if I have like 12 things to do and then I see there's four new email and I know what those people are going to ask for next, yeah. then I'm just like, I need you to go away for a week while I do the stuff that you asked me to do in the first place Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or else because I know that getting into a new thing with you because that's a new shiny object for you, you're going to want to switch gears and you're going to want to talk about it a lot and then we're going to forget about this thing that I'm working on until the deadline hits and you're like, oh yeah, by the way, where's that thing? And then all of a sudden, so I just get like filled with dread about communication. That's kind of the whole reason I ended up coming over to to bully was because you just couldn't you needed somebody to handle that email aspect in order to keep up and maintain emails are a a bucket to handle and like some i know some clients are not uh needy but Mm -hmm. some really are and you'll get 12 14 emails a day and they'll just be like read this please and it's 40 pages of things like "Uh, no i don't i don't want to on top of having to do the work uh, one of the other things that came up as a sign was uh, you go into defensive mode. Mm-hmm. And I can yeah. agree to that. I was that in that this <laughs> just recently, unfortunately, um, which I went into a meeting and uh, it was a, a larger meeting. And right away, um, I was in defensive mode of like everything sucks. Not everything sucks, but like this is all wrong. I'm I'm concerned about everything falling down. Defense. Yeah, exactly. And it was right after I kind of went on a an expressive uh, rant that I realized how defensive I was being and just yeah. had to take a step back. So it's like through a normal day, you're like, oh, that was weird when you're not actually self-analyzing as to what's going on. 
Which is why I'm really looking forward to vacation coming up. So are we. <laughs> Yay. And it's a first. It'll be the first vacation in a long time for us that just has like no, mm. nothing attached to it. Like yeah, no work nothing, attached to it. Yeah, nothing negative other than just being on vacation. Yeah, so, so it's been like seven years of working vacations. Right. And then we had one last year. Then that got fucked up by somebody who was an idiot. Um, and on the first day of vacation, it was just like another work stress and, and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, really looking forward. Like, like even if we just like lay on the floor with our face down mm-hmm. for a week, mm-hmm. that's great. Mm-hmm. And, and like nobody's like, I need something because you ain't going to get it. So is that like a, a symptom of burnout or a cure for burnout for you then? Just lying in zero stimulation. That's a, that's like a treatment. Yeah. It doesn't cure it. Mm-hmm. The only cure is getting everything done. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is like Magic Johnson took a lot of pills before he took the magic one, which t- took his HIV away. So it's like laying on the floor is like I'm on my way to being uh, HIV free. I feel like this isn't the first time we've referenced Magic Johnson. On this you song. say you say we, but yeah. it's just Matt. Is it just Matt? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I did hey, once. It's the royal we. I, yeah. I admire his his gamesmanship. Uh, I admire his uh, his ability to see the open man uh, and his predilection for risky sex. Here's <laughs> while we while I derail us for one second. How do you, what is your, what is your uh, opinion towards when couples say we are having a baby as opposed to <laughs> I'm having a baby and uh, that guy's a donor. And that thing has a dick. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't like when people say hubby. I, I think that's really, really douchey. Wifey. I feel like wifey. Well, I feel like on. that's along the hold same on. lines. Oh, okay. Those things, I feel well, I'm, like, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of like, you said the, the group we. Well, I, it's like we've used that a few times and it's. Well, because if I said I've used it. I think I just mean it was said on the right. Yeah. So for <laughs> burnout, technical foul. <laughs> All right. Do you do you because mm-hmm. uh, you do partial creative work and then partial project management oh, and dev and dev production and right yeah. digital marketing stuff. Yeah. So lots of lots of Ryan's in lots of meetings. I have more hats than I have. Heads. Heads. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to call them hat holders, but I uh, know it's a head. <laughs> I regretted that when I started saying it. There was no way out gracefully. So, yeah. Because yeah, um, what I'm wondering is, uh, like for yourself, um, what causes the burnout? Is it is it a creative burnout where, like, is it a combination of like I can't create anymore? I need a I need a mental break from being creative, or is it just the work? load i think for me personally um the way my job is starting to evolve i'm really excited about because i'm not the type of person who can just do one thing that's where my burnout comes from so i've tried i've done various different roles in this industry now and i'd say the one that i've enjoyed the least so far is the one where i had the least um um amount of varied activities to do so i was i was hired to just be a copywriter Mm -hmm. and that's how i burnt out i got tired of writing website copy day in day out for similar companies and similar organizations and i was just i got i got depressed like i was just mentally exhausted and there's only nothing about it was fun Mm -hmm. and it was really hard but at this job i have um i've got writing and then i've got web production and i have um ux planning i have project management and so there's really like if i'm starting to get burnt out on being creative there's other things for me to to outlet my energy to and then come back when i'm feeling creative again yeah i don't think my personality could ever handle a job that was just one thing that, right. would be in, that would be killer for me. It's fu- funny, like, because the creative aspect of to what I do, like, I'd never get tired of it. Mm-hmm. Like, being able to be creative and think of solutions. I only get bored by it when it's just like a repeating of old stuff that's done before where there's mm-hmm. nothing yep. kind of unique and interesting and uh, about it. But it's it's never it's never the cause. It's always the, the workload. Mm-hmm. It's funny, I remember in high school, in one of the art classes I had, um, at the time, the teacher was cool because you'd go in and you'd say to her, like, I'm just not feeling it today. I'm not really feeling that creative. And she's like, that's OK. Come back tomorrow. Yeah. What I either am I. That's why I'm an art teacher. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what I wish is that there was more like 
taking it as a job, be like, oh, guess what? If you had a job in this, you don't have a choice. Like, right. I can't go into work and be like, you know what, guys? I'm not really feeling creative today. Mm. I'm just uh, I'm just going to go self-explore today and I'll be <laughs> back tomorrow. Like, no, we have deadlines. It's like, yeah. I wish there was more more real life stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for me, um, doing this for almost like 20 years now, and I, I never have gotten like a creative block like burnout never affects like and i just can't make anything now like Mm -hmm. if anything i have too many ideas all the time the thing that typically takes me to the point of burnout is is a shitty process it's people yeah like not hitting their mark it's people bitching about doing their job Mm -hmm. it's about people just like not getting back to you with the things they promised and then all of a sudden like your deadline window is shrinking Mm -hmm. and their fucking around time is growing. And then that's what really sets me off. And when it happens a few times in a row, then I just like lose it because in my head, it's like, if you all fucked off, this would be done right now. And I don't care about people management. I don't care about, well, you know, that's their job. So you have to let them do the job. It's like, if they're not doing their job, I can do their job as well. So I'll, Mm -hmm. I'll just do that so I can get my job done. And if they have a problem with it, they're welcome to reply to any of my emails that I sent them that they didn't, they didn't reply to. Just stop. <laughs> like, stop getting in my fucking way and let me do my work. It'll be worse the more you're involved. <laughs> but you <laughs> insist on being involved. Do you Do you get, uh, and I'm just making up this term. Cause Boners I when I'm mad? <laughs> <laughs> like, Boner. like my right eyes now. are up here. <laughs> Near the, the top of the my table, boner. The table is just <laughs> tilted. <laughs> it's poking through your shirt. You got to scratch my chin. Uh, do you, do you get uh, <laughs> project depression? And what I mean, what I'm trying to explain by that is when a project starts, everybody is happy and excited to kick off. Yeah. And then as the project timeline goes goes on and their side lets you down continually where they're, they're slow on content or slow on their end and then like it, the, the momentum of it starts to drop yeah i always find that like that really hurts and that adds on to everything else yeah. we were just recently um working with a client it was a three-month engagement and we had a plan to do and now you're married uh, <laughs> it, it takes three months. sex time a lot of paperwork <laughs> a lot of paperwork out of province so uh and we had like a plan to do a lot of work but as we started to dig into it, um, and we like we were all excited, everybody was excited to start, and then you realize that on their development side, it was a disaster, and they didn't know what they were doing, mm-hmm. and like we're trying to work with their disaster, and then from a company organization management, there was so much infighting and disagreement that we just found out <laughs> yesterday that like oh we're we won't be continuing the contract after three months oh, no. the company is going through a reorganization and this contact person they just quit and this person's not going to be there it's mm-hmm. like holy shit it's like you guys brought what was going to be a cool project down to we hate this because yeah yeah uh, and that just like adds on to like you want to you want to put out good stuff mm-hmm. and then when the stuff happens it just piles up and piles up and then you have no you can't really like find a way to make it like a happy ending it's super funny and um i don't know if you're listening justin but if you listen to our (laughs) podcast i'm gonna quote you here but my favorite thing that justin our um superstar develop lead developer um always says is like sometimes the web process can drag on so long that the code that you've written is now two years old and it's not how you would necessarily code a website anymore. So he says it's projects like those that he calls his ex-girlfriends because it's like passing an ex-girlfriend on the street. You just like dread when that one crosses your desk again. And that happens a lot just in this industry and because it's so many people have to agree to every moving part of the Yeah, and the it's process. also uh, the problem when you're working with clients as opposed to product when you're reliant yeah. on a whole other team that isn't in sync with how you're doing things mm-hmm. yeah but yeah. i was just curious about though whether it was it was like the if if you experienced that and if it added to the burnout feeling it's always other people <laughs> fucking up what should be a relatively smooth thing right because i'm ready to go the whole time mm-hmm. and they're like just let's circle back and we'll look at that and let's wrap our heads around that. And 
all that means is I don't have time to deal with this today or I don't, I, I, I'm not willing to say I don't know what you're talking about mm-hmm. at the risk of sounding dumb. So I'm just going to put this off because I have other things to do. And then all of a sudden I know that my deadline just got, like my working time just got chopped by a week because this person isn't willing to say they don't know what they're doing and they're not willing just to say, just do it, it'll be fine. This is so horrible, but just from working with you, I learned how you reacted to stuff like Poorly. that. And then you would get to a point where you would get so frustrated with it that you would just do what they were asking to be yep. done. And it was like, you didn't care anymore. It was like, and it was the saddest thing to see because it was just like, it just turned into production work but, at that point. But it wasn't that I didn't care anymore. It's just that I knew we would never get paid if I didn't just do what they wanted at the end. Yeah. So it was like, at this point, it's like, well, just put the 20 on the dresser and you know you can put a turn up in my ass if you want i just need the money and it sucks you don't want to you know nobody wants to turn up in their ass um (laughs) turn up for what is it ass play (laughs) (laughs) um and turn up it up to 11. nope that was bad yeah that one didn't (laughs) um but yeah it's it's that point where it's like you're looking at well they typically take five weeks to pay when we invoice them anyway Mm -hmm. and you're looking at the calendar it's like god damn it i have to just give them what they want so we can invoice because they're never going to stop like nitpicking just jamming their thumb into this project's like forehead until they reach the brain and kill it it's like you don't know why you hired us so we're just going to give you what you want now just so you'll pay your bill and you'll they'll be happy with the work because it's what they prescribed Mm -hmm. but it's shit work and and I, and yeah, that really bums me out because Ryan can attest to this too. Is like I I get obsessive about projects like with the research, and then like creating fake characters that represent the brand that only the owners will see. I've done that a bunch of times, and just trying to get everybody involved in the project, just like make their life easy. So when they show up to a meeting with me, I have more done than they thought I would, mm-hmm. and it's better than they thought they would, and there's stuff just for them. And then once they start taking that for granted, then it's like, fuck, like I tried to keep you excited the whole time so I could get my, what I need from you because you were in a good mood. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, you got caught up in your work and now my situation is just waiting for you to be, to have enough spare time to half-ass something to me. And then that really bums me out because being the only person in the project that cares, and but there's seven people on a project, and everyone else is holding you up, that, yeah, that just, like, crashes me right into the wall. Right. Yeah, and then I break things, and mm-hmm. I yell at people in the street, and... You, what do you yell? Just, like, it's it's usually, yeah, like, traffic-related. Nice shirt! I like your shirt! How many buttons you got? Did you lose weight? You look great! <laughs> Fucker! No, like, they're, <laughs> like, we'll be at, like, a crosswalk or something, and somebody will almost drive into Ryan and I, and then I'll just full-on just kick their car as hard as I can. And then they'll stop, and I'll just scream, what? And then they keep driving. Sometimes, because uh, I'm nice. A nice little nice little thing that I do just for me is yeah. if I'm in a vehicle by myself, oh. I yell a uh, fuck really loud. Yeah. As loud as I can. Usually near as I'm passing by a bus stop so that the people stand there and go, what the fuck's going <laughs> on? <laughs> so it's, it's like a win-win. I get, you know, you get a scream, and then yeah. you get a little reaction, a little bit of joy and humor. Yeah, well, if we don't let out this anger, according to Time Magazine, well, uh, if we work <laughs> too much, uh, we will die. Now, I think, oh, actually, the wording is how working too much can actually kill you, because as I say, we're all going to die. Well, then you don't sleep or eat, so yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, see what oh, they have to say. Over oh. 40? Well, working a full-time job might actually be bad for your brain. That's according Brain. to research coming out of Melbourne. <laughs> as reported Melbourne. by Melbourne. BBC, researchers found the ideal Mel work week bakery. was a mere 25 <laughs> hours. The catch, working less than or more oh than boy. 25 hours, oh, oh. is hazardous for brain function, with excessively long hours causing tiredness and stress. The study analyzed mm. 3,000 women and 3,000 men from Australia, Which is fine. testing them She's on reading comprehension, bum. number and letter matching, and reciting numbers backwards. Those working about 25 hours a week tested better. The study also found people who were unemployed or working long hours tested 15% lower than those putting uh-huh. in that ideal 25 hours of work each week, which has implications if you're in retirement. 
Maybe not working Retirement. isn't the best thing for your brain after all. So if you're 40 or older, you'll want four-day weekends if you want to keep your brain happy. Great for your brain, maybe not so great for your paycheck. Your paycheck. <laughs> wah, wah. So the style of that article is very terrible, but so, I like that it was like... What, what do you think this is, France? Come even, on. Even they do a, a four-day work if week. I, if I have to be working for the weekend... If I'm working for a four day weekend, they could be for a French yeah. company. I ain't working that much. You know, though, that makes sense because I'm, 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 I'm getting the luxury to kind of write my dream job right now at the agency that I'm at. And I'm thinking about how I want to structure my week. And for me to avoid burnout, I sometimes have to remove myself. And like I was saying before, I like having different hats, but also having like a different work environment works she for me. She loves a Samuel L. Jackson need, Kangle. You, you need hooks for those hats. I do. Instead or of wearing them all at the same time. This hat is a holders. Po- this is a different podcast. Yeah. No, it's the same one. It's no, no. It's my hardware. My, oh, what's it, what do you call that? What's a hook? No, nope, go on. on. No, goddamn it! What's, <laughs> I won't. I what's won't a go hook? On. What's a hook that you put a hat on? Yeah, like what would you call that? A, a hat hook? hook? Is it a har- like? Would you, you buy it from a hardware store? So what would that be called? Coat Software. Hook? Oh, it's called Home Depot. I think we're <laughs> no. Moving anyway, on. moving on. <laughs> We've gone off the rails on this crazy train. All right, so let's get off the crazy train. Do you ever train. feel that we were on the rails? No. <laughs> anyway, right. what I was trying to say is that... <laughs> we're four by fouring in a train. I think the idea of a four-day work week is is ideal. Like I like working four days in the office and then having one day in the middle of the week to actually work from home and take a deep breath and get at, like deep work done that I'm not being constantly like distracted. Yep. So even though it, it's still technically working over 25 hours a week, it just the difference. Yeah. I mean, I, I know uh, working less is like you can, if you know you're working less, you can be more focused and productive because mm-hmm. a lot of the day, you know, you're there for a long time day mm-hmm. for the entire week and there's going to be times you're like i'm just going to look at stuff yeah because yeah. i have a few minutes but if you if you knew that you had less time you would never look at that stuff and, absolutely and if you said to a company like okay our work week is now 25 hours you have to cut all unessential meetings and they yeah. have to be have so much purpose and if they're an hour they're now half an hour yeah, yeah. then you would conform a company to doing that and i think it would work really well and people would be super efficient you'd probably get more work done than a 40 mm-hmm. hour week and i think gen- people would be generally more happy i think so overall well was it in france they instituted the mandatory four-day work week and there was like rules um like government mandated rules against emailing co-workers or employees after 6 p.m on a week day and then you can't email them at all on the weekend you can literally pop them in the face yeah or sock them in the face Pop and sock. That's that one, as a project manager, that's so hard, though. Like, for instance, I had to pull a lot of extra hours over the last week and a half or so because we've got so many projects going on. And so I didn't have time necessarily to do my, like, project management tasking during my regular work day. And so the only time I could find to do it was about 5.30 in the mornings. And I know that's not ideal. And so people were a little bit irate that their phones were pinging that early with tasks that were being assigned to them but i have nowhere else to fit that in my day but that's also their problem that their phones are yeah. receiving no right. that's right. a that's the a whole other part of the disconnection absolutely it's like hey dildos t- turn on your do not disturb right like as soon as i introduce that feature the dill don't disturb <laughs> dill don't go there girlfriend <laughs> but you just, um, yeah. but like as soon as that feature was introduced i turned it on my phone and now i'm like three phones later and it's never been off like I'm not willing to be interrupted because somebody's like talking on Slack about something that has nothing to do with Mm -hmm. me because it's just a nightmare. So if, if when you are not at work, you're allowing that, those notifications to come into your house, then. So notification is different than an email in this respect. Yes. um, What I'll do is if I'm writing an email after hours, um, I use Spark. It's like a free email client. It's a little ugly. It works really well. Um, Anyway, yeah, accidentally sponsored by Spark. Thank you for all your money and support. Um, but you can schedule to send it for for eight a.m. Mm-hmm. So then I can I can write it all up, schedule for tomorrow. Even if they have their notifications, um, or if they have their notifications on at home, there's no ding, no nothing because there's no email yet, and right. it's just like you can still get it done. But with something like Slack, which I fucking hate Slack so much. I like Slack. 
but it's it's a nonstop like it's a flood of like ding 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 and it's just well like I left a Slack channel at work because it was too annoying. So everyone was having fun. It's like you have forty you know notifications, and I looked. I'm like, this doesn't have to be in my my day. So I guess are we making the switch to solutions or like things that help us try to get through that? Might as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So on the topic of Slack, uh, I am not part of any. Uh, what I call extracurricular uh, channels. Oh, me neither. Mine are all just work related, project yeah, related. But we have so many that people are part of. I'm like, where do you have the time to participate in this? Um, and even if I post like a normal, non work related question in our water cooler, mm-hmm. it gets side railed by other conversations. It's like, yep. and the last, so the last one I posted, I was asking about a, uh, a coho card which mm-hmm. is like the prepaid visa and whether anyone I looked into it after you mentioned it last episode and I ordered one. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, I picked the the pink and blue one I think. Oh. Also sponsored by Coho. Hashtag update y'all. Hashtag mm. salmon. Um <laughs> but or fair. But yeah, Slack is just uh, and I like turn every channel set to don't notify me unless I'm mentioned like Directly. specifically and even then don't do anything except for like <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Just like <laughs> sl- quietly raise your hand. Like, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. It, it, people didn't really adopt Slack so much at my work. So I just, we just have project related channels. We don't have any general channels. We don't use the water cooler at all. Right. And then we have direct messages. And I like Slack because especially when in our project channels, we're talking about stuff. I like the thread aspect where you can go back and have a conversation farther up. Mm-hmm. But, but nobody uses the reply thing in Slack properly. We do. What do you mean? Like when you write a post, you, you can reply just to that post. Yeah, that's and what it, I was just talking about. The yeah, yeah, the thing. threading of it. Yeah. yeah, so, but nobody uses it. They just reply. Somebody, somebody tried to come out, I think it was last year, and it was like a Slack alternative where it was just threads. You can't like have a running message yeah it has to be like this is a new conversation topic Mm -hmm. and then that way it's easier it's more organized yeah and people just can't add you know nothing into it i also will shut down email i'll just turn it off for extended periods of time be like no i only open it a couple times to see what's happening like like if you're designing or developing or, or doing something where you have to focus like checking your email like three times a day is fine Mm-hmm. Like as soon as you get in, um, b- before you go for lunch, and then like just like an hour before the end of the day, that's when I typically look at email. It's like that's enough time to respond. But if anything's on fire, somebody will come and tap me on the shoulder, like, "Hey, someone emailed you, and now they they didn't hear from you since this morning, and now they've me- messaged me like three times." It's like, okay, well, this seems like a genuine emergency. Mm-hmm. Like it'll get to you. Mm-hmm. But it can't just like fuck your whole day with just like ding, ding, ding. Like, hey, what's up? Hey, at channel. Hey, whatever. Like, who wants to go for beers or whatever afterwards? It's like, just have that in a human talk. Don't yeah. In uh, cloud work shit with it. Where the spouse works. Um, the, there's people there who will email you and then walk over here to your desk. Be like, did you see the email I sent? It's like, yeah, it's, oh, I, it's number 50 in the list. <laughs> I can one up that. When I worked at a university as a designer, um, my boss would send me an email, then would hit print on it, and would go to the printer, (laughs) walk down to my office, knock on the door, because it was always locked from the inside, and just hold it. I'd open the door, and he goes, I just sent you this. Did you get it? And And I would just look at him for like five seconds, and then I would slowly turn to my computer, and I'd hit like refresh on email, and like, just arrived. He's like, okay, great. And then he'd be like, do you want to keep this? Handing me a piece of paper. I was like, no, I think I have just the regular email. I think that'll be probably the best way to go because I don't want to just like write on this as a reply and it goes back and forth. He's like, okay, so do you want me to recycle it? I was like, you can, I don't know, impregnate it. You can shove it in the mouth of a coworker. I don't really give a shit. Just like you're printing an email to tell me that you sent me an email. I don't think he could impregnate it. Uh, he v- looked virile. <laughs> he was an idiot, but he he's... super didn't. He was beige. <clears throat> he was like all one color. Yeah, so well, <laughs> you, you guys, you two youths, okay. us guys, um, we, so you go, he's we. You go the communal we, mm-hmm. uh, you guys uh, go for walks. We sure do daily, like at the lunch hour. Oh yeah, time. yeah. It's very. I personal. think that helps. 
yep. to get to get out and away. Mm-hmm. Well, and to just, when people eat at their desk, oh it drives God. me nuts. Oh yeah, I go. I try to go far away. Yeah, that's what we do. We yeah. wa- we get like a snack for a few minutes, and we'll walk for forty five minutes or fifty minutes, yeah. and then go back to work. Yeah, or that, or I'm hidden away in a corner where I can't see anybody. Yeah, um, and then just sitting there. Yeah, even in the winter when it was crappy out, we never we never just stayed in the office at all. No, it's you have to leave. Like a big thing of um, burnout for me too is working too much in the same spot. Like when I know that in the morning, like especially working from home, I know I'm getting burnt out if I don't put clothes on. Like just like <laughs> <laughs> you just stand there in your hair sweater, just. Flop in the dingling. Are you gonna put a picture up? of my hair sweater? I feel like there should be a visual at this point in the podcast. Yeah, we're trying to it's actually exclusively we are exclusively visual. We're trying medium. to lose. <laughs> we're trying to lose listeners, so I think that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, we accidentally gained some. <sighs> Not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in it for the money. New Limerick people. You know what, Limerick? If you're listening, you know the email. They've we're not, we're gonna stop chasing <laughs> you. They've let us down. <laughs> this is insane. We're going for cork now. Yeah, Ooh. cork. You fuck is in cork. That's no. in Boston, right? No, no it's I- in Ireland. Ireland town. Yeah. Okay. And they play a game where they throw a ball on the road and everyone drinks beer and smokes. And says things <coughs> like, how do you like these grapefruits? These pots of gold. Because <laughs> <laughs> Ireland's known for its citrus. Yeah, delicious citrus. So um, I'll know that I'm starting to get burnt out when I wake up and it's like, well, I'm not going to shower. I'm just going to like put on like some cut off shorts and just start working again. Normally, like, even if I work from home, I like to, like, have a shower. You put on regular clothes. You just, like, feel like, okay, this is this part of the day. But it's kind of like the like the Pat Oswalt thing where he left the house in, like, a... Sweatpants. A, but, like, purple sweatpants and a purple sweatshirt. And he realized he was just all one color. And then he, like, a parking cop yelled at him and he almost cried. I just got these magazines. <laughs> I want to hold the ham. But... Um, that kind of thing where it's like you start slipping into like almost like a depression. It's just like, this is life now. Like yeah. why even bother changing clothes and small things like going for a walk or, you know, having a shower or going to like run an errand in the middle of the day that it's not necessary, but it's mm-hmm. like, Oh, I desperately need this cable. Like when I'm burnt out, I start making like little projects that are easily winnable. Yeah. It's like, I will reorganize my office if I'm really busy. Cause it's like, before I dig in for the next like four days for like 18 hours a day, I need a quick win. So mm-hmm. I'll just be like, oh, I changed all the art in the office. Mm-hmm. That means nothing, but it, yeah. <laughs> it it made me happy. And it was a quick project that was over. And now it's like, I'm never avoiding the work. I'm always just like. You need something different. It's like a palate cleanser or something. But it's like in train spotting, the first time he wanted to like go off heroin and he brought like a bucket and like a bunch of pills and ice cream and stuff and, and he like boarded himself in the mm-hmm. room it's like but first he needed that one more hit and then it sh- it, like it showed all the boards ripped off the door and he put that thing up his butt and got high <laughs> rearranging or cleaning is like something in my butt before i can get high butt high butt high mamma mia where's Alea here again <laughs> oh, no. like, from a sicily <laughs> it's like it's like butt chugging before your desk yeah exactly well, why is it always butt chugging when i'm here I guess you. you have, I guess, I, <laughs> hey, you're the one that keeps suggesting it. I guess you have a type. Um, um, so, so there's little, uh, little kind of micro things that you can do to try and fend off that. It is. People have labeled the the burnout as uh, having similar signs of depression too. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, and one of them is wanting to drink and eat more, which and eat shit. Oh, I'm. It's definitely like. The urge to be, it's the middle of the day, like, I feel like I'm going to have eight beers, and it's, oh, it's 11. Mm. It's like, that's a bad sign for, to be feeling that. Um, Not if you're wearing a Life's a Beach t-shirt. <laughs> oh. Then you're like Moondog from, it's, uh, I like to what wear was that called? <laughs> beach Bomb. That was great. You liked it more than I liked it, for <laughs> sure. I liked it quite a bit. It was okay. Is that, uh... The Matthew new McConaughey. one? All right, all oh right, all right. Uh, I was just watching Tropic Thunder today. Rightly so. With uh, where Matthew McConaughey is the uh, Tug oh, Speedman's Tug, agent. Yeah. And in the scene, uh, Tug, who's played by Ben Sitter, was talking about, he asked him how his adoption was mm-hmm. going. And he's like, well, there's just some paperwork. And Matthew McConaughey looks at the picture on his desk and it's him and his son. He's like, 
at least you get to pick yours. <laughs> 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 and I forgot how good that movie is. It is, and he's desperate to get a Mativo in uh, Vietnam yeah. or whatever. So, And he goes there. But, uh, but yeah, so having those little kind of micro uh, away times or break points is, is kind of what keeps the yeah, everything but in check. When you're talking about like habits start to take a dive. Oh, yeah. Like there were like, it's like, well, if I'm working all night, I deserve like a 12 pack of beer because I got to get something out of this, which is just a stupid mindset. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't help get work done, but it's like, all right, I need a treat if I'm going to be doing extra. But it's, it's really like looking back at it now is just like, just get the shit done, then go get whatever treat you want. Like, don't be an idiot and like, don't merge your burnout with like motivation, like identify a burnout, be like, I'm feeling crazy right now, yeah. Yeah. but I got to do something about it. My deadlines aren't changing. A lot of stuff is not changing, but I can't just turn into a piece of shit because I'm feeling sorry for myself about my situation. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, we've been trying to be a lot healthier over the last few months and it's been amazing. And I've hit a really good stride this past couple of weeks to avoid burnout. And it's definitely, it's well, not the last few days, but it's going to bed earlier at night. Prayers, of, vitamins. Well, no, instead of working really hard till two in the morning because I have a deadline and I have to get it done, I'm realistic about the quality of the work I'm putting out. Oh, yeah. So I'll go to bed at 10 and get up at five. And I find those hours before anybody else get, gets up, that's my most productive time and I'm loving it. I've yeah. I've done that where it'll be, you know, late at night. I'm like, I cannot, I'm so tired. I, I can't look at this these screens anymore. I yeah. know I can't come up. It's like, and I can get up at you know four or five in the morning, and I'll come in and redesign an entire site and, and be like, "Feels great." This is where it should have been yeah. a week ago, and it just happened in a moment. And then everything you do throughout the day is just like extra, right? And mm-hmm. it feels so good. And yeah. So so with vacations uh, coming up, vacay. What's your what's your plan to disconnect? Mm. just not do anything that has anything to do like i'm great when, when i work for a company i'm gr- i'm great <laughs> at vacation because they're like so if we need to get in touch with you how will we do that i was like i don't know do you watch survivor mm-hmm. man you don't goodbye you like send in a chopper like we went camping last year at china beach mm-hmm. right around victoria which is awesome it's like sandy beaches and big waves and it's like a melted ice cube. It's so goddamn cold. It's crazy. But once you get in, it's like your body goes into shock and it's that thing where your body turns hot because it's so cold. Are you doing a Stefan bit right now? No, that's oh, yeah. well, that's a actual... Uh, it's hypothermia? No, it's... Um, <laughs> Qigong. It's a weird thing. I know the some Russians b- believe it and also some Japanese as well. It's like where they shower under a waterfall. Oh yeah, like so, those monks in the yeah. Yeah, so when you when you force your body to be cold uh and like lower the temperature, then it naturally heats <gasps> up and fights off yeah. uh it fights off you know colds and viruses naturally, yeah. and that's the theory of it is like making yourself cold on purpose to naturally raise your body like temperature and self defense. <laughs> yeah. It's the same kind of deal as acup- acupuncture. Right? You're stimu- trying to get. I've never had it, so I don't know. Yeah, it's just trying to bring like stim, like oh uh, yeah, like circulation it's, it's, to right. let your it's, body help uh, self heal. Yeah, it's it's alerting your body like something screwed up, so kick into high gear to fix it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did did I last episode? Did I chat about Kyle Webster's talk when he talked about being bored? Oh, when he just laid on the ground. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I intend to do on my vacation is to be bored. Yeah. And to just not try to be not try to entertain myself with like a screen or read something yeah and just Oof. stare at nothing look outside mm-hmm. look at a plant and like turn off the phone for a couple of days and like don't get a message don't get a phone call yeah. just yeah. let it do that, whatever it's so interesting sorry do no you, you go ahead yeah i was gonna say it's so oh, interesting because we were just having that conversation at I lunch it today <laughs> <laughs> we were having that conversation at lunch today about how we're at, we're just at the very start of this. It's going to get much worse, but how disheartening it is to look around and see everybody just staring at their phones all the time. Mm-hmm. And so Matt is making the effort, and I also am um, just not to look at my phone while I'm on the bus at all. Like I, I, I make a oh. conscious effort to look out the window instead of just staring down. But don't don't I mean did I don't know if you ever. Uh, 
you probably no, you might not have being from Nanaimo. I mean, any place <gasps> that has a mall. How dare you expose me? <laughs> but I remember as uh, growing up in areas of Park Hill. It was born in Victoria. Going to the mall mm-hmm. in Nanaimo and just people watching. Yeah. And yeah. you like, and I, I find that so fascinating. Just like watch mm-hmm. people on the yeah. bus is a great place to do that. It really yeah. is. And yeah. you, if and you, listen. it's a if freak can, aquarium. Mm-hmm. What I will do sometimes is I'll make up backstories for people Mm -hmm. in my head and like just create a false knowledge of them and it's a lot of fun and see what i would do is i would take pictures like i would take a like a bus that went to the university a lot going to work and i would take pictures of people's like screwed up clothes and there's always there's a period where there was like a lot of guys wearing like light gray sweatpants that had pee stains on the front Mm -hmm. and i would take pictures of them that's true. I have. So I, I had my phone out, but I was more of um, like a, a journalist. Voyeur. Or like a wildlife photographer and being like, and then send them to Ryan like, oh, another guy with pee on his pants. <laughs> it's fun for me, but, so, and then the phone goes away. I was on mat leave and that was like my only like contact with the outside world. It was just pee, pee pants. We were, we were Ryan at calls a local. She goes to work. I'm going to mat leave. God blow my pee pants. <laughs> uh, we were at a, uh, one of the local breweries a number of weeks ago and we were sitting there. This is a very vague statement. Having a beer. I don't want to just name names because uh, I'll, I'll use my non regional dialect. Uh, a local brewery a was, number of weeks ago. Sort of, <laughs> don't worry about it. Because it doesn't really matter where it was, but there was somebody there who was in short shorts. It was a gentleman, an older gentleman, which I, I recognize him from somewhere. I think it's just in town. Yeah. And uh, Sir Ian McKellen? No. But the first thing I noticed is those shorts are way too short for your balls to actually <laughs> pop out. And two, when I looked it's upon closer in sp- yeah. No, they're perfect for that. <laughs> yeah, they're perfect for that. Sounds <laughs> ideal. The, yes. Hotsy, tatsy. <laughs> Once I got past that, I was like, oh, you got a pee stain on the front of your shorts, <laughs> It's like There's and, so little real estate to stain. But he was having a conversation with somebody. He's like, I wouldn't be able to have that situation. I just want to get out of there. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> So uh, to burn out, <laughs> I also like to do, um, I like to occupy my time, like I said, with being bored mm-hmm. and not doing anything, but also doing something constructive that has nothing to do with the day job mm-hmm. and nothing to yep. do with an electronic or, well, that's not always true because sometimes it has tools involved, but like working out in the yard or like digging, just digging a hole <laughs> for six <laughs> hours, it, not like, it builds character. Like jo- uh, joy from friends, okay. love it. Yeah, <laughs> digging a hole. Uh, Calvin's okay. daddy used to say he would build character. Yeah, uh, but doing something that's just totally unrelated as as part of your time off mm-hmm. is just not thinking about anything you do related day to day. It's just wonderful trying to like reset your brain. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I mean, we've got kids. It's hard to do that with kids because yeah. like well, the second you're like I want to do something just for me they're like can I help you're like yeah, mm, no yes Cook, cooking I guess for me I, yeah um, and running I guess mm-hmm. that's about all I have time for I squeeze those yeah. in every once in a while one of them's a necessity yeah <laughs> running Yay. sometimes yeah. eating while running yeah. uh, <laughs> just bo- big bowl of soup <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> all has to be two base so burritos <laughs> enchiladas no. Chimichangas. Got my red end chopsticks. Yeah. Oh, that's just dangerous. <laughs> it is. Especially if they're in the metal ones. My nana would hate hearing that. I have a an issue when you go to a sushi place and they give you plastic chopsticks. Okay. They don't they don't help pick up things. The wooden ones actually have uh friction. More grip. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. Yep. I don't like the feel of like the wooden ones so I don't like getting a sliver in my tongue. Well, do you bring your own? <laughs> yeah. No, she has them in like a little you pool cue case where yeah. she takes them out and then screws them together, <laughs> lines them up, like uh, rolls, yep. rolls them on the table. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, talking about that, like doing stuff <laughs> at home. <laughs> talking about vague. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Th- talking about stuff and guys. Uh, we're talking about doing stuff at home that has like nothing to do with anything that you do during the day. That's where kids are great even though you don't always get to do what you want to do it's different than work it's like you get home and they're just like hey like they're they're happy that you're there just because you're there they don't want because you're the provider too well yeah if you ask any of um (laughs) i can't work the microwave if you ask any of our kids what does food buy they all say loyalty (laughs) so 
they're just happy you're there. They don't want anything from you other than you just to exist. And it's like refreshing to delight somebody that you don't really have to like, okay, so I have to like make you laugh by this deadline tonight and all this. Like it's, mm. it's very loose. So yeah, it's, that's a good part of. They're good clients. I don't they know. are good clients. I don't have a different mind. Like I was, I took the liberty of taking some time for myself today and I left work at 10 to 6 and I walked home and then bust back here for this podcast. So I was really relishing that walk home because that was my only time by myself today. But I wasn't really relishing. That was like I knew I was lying as I just said that. I felt guilty because I felt like I I wasn't home for Ashton, our oldest son. And and I felt bad that the kids were out of town and I felt bad that I didn't wrap up everything on all of my projects today. And I feel bad that we're at some point going on vacation and at some point in the future and and um yeah so it's really unless you have like you said like unless you're digging a hole or the kid is talking to you (laughs) it's really hard for me to turn off and just enjoy that time like i don't think that being bored is something that i could do as a as a relief from burnout and so what ryan and i both Mm -hmm. get is if we're not with the kids if we're not with each other and if we're not working, we feel guilt like mm-hmm. it's hard to take time for yourself uh, because we don't have family in town. We don't have any help with the kids. So it's it's just been like the five of us. It's like this like Borg formed together forever. And then it's like one thing I have written down here about burnout is like losing friends, forgetting yeah. hobbies, um, your, your health goes to shit, all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Because it's like especially like – in, Vic- in Victoria, Ugh. it gets yeah. cold and stuff. So it's like, okay, kids, let's go for a walk. It's like it's negative three. Um, it's like we, it's it's not fun outside. So you end up watching a movie. Then it's like let's have some snacks and whatever. And then you just like you also oh. lose the motivation to do stuff. Absolutely. So, so like, oh, I'll clean that tomorrow, and then tomorrow turns into a month later. Yeah, it just becomes part of the landscape, and you're like, fuck, everything's like. Work isn't at a hundred percent. Family's not a hundred percent. And it would take you're not doing anything. It would take mere minutes, but even just doing it is like uh, I'm not going to do that right now. It's just one more thing that needs me right now, and that's the burnout thing for me is like when you're saying just digging a hole, like Mm -hmm. like in in the midst of a burnout, I just want to be left alone. I don't want to not work. I just want to be left alone, like. Like if if you could snap your fingers and just cease to exist, but you just you're in like a black hole and you, with your computer and like your sketchbook, yeah. you could just get your work done, and then come back. That would be great, but it's it doesn't work like that. Definitely, um, I I think I didn't know if I was going to talk about it or not, but I actually I actually experienced an absolute burnout where I just shut down and that was it. And that was in a job that I had and things got so bad and so bad. Everything that you guys were saying, describing when projects drag on and on and a client's doing this and then another person on the project isn't carrying their weight and all gets down on you. And I was getting to the point like what Matt was just talking about, like, oh, I just wish I could like disappear into a black hole and just like press reset it on everything. And I got to a point one day where the client was yelling at me and then the owner was yelling at me and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I can. Like, this is my life. I only have X many minutes in my life. So I am going to evaporate into a black hole right now. And I just left. I went on a mental health leave. And, and I guess that right there was the very definition of burnout. I got yep. pushed too far and I just shut down completely. And uh, Would you consider that a stress leave? I did. I did consider it a stress leave. Right. I, I, I did um, plan on coming back. Um, and then it just, um, I was like paralyzed. I was so paralyzed that I, um, I went out and I took on freelance jobs because I, I didn't know how I was going to go back. Like I was so frantic and so burnt out that I was like, I would rather fucking work at Staples than go back to any position in this industry ever again. And then it made me so upset that I was overqualified for Staples. So uh, they probably, maybe they would hire me if I didn't put my actual work experience down on my resume. But even if they did, that wouldn't be enough money to sustain my family to the level that my career has been able to do to that point. So I was fucked. At that point, I was like, the only thing I'm qualified to do is the thing that's going to kill me. And then that was, that was a scary point for me and it took me a month I had to go uh, for a month and I let clients down I didn't finish my freelance projects and I let my my previous employer down in a lot of ways and I have a lot of guilt about that but I was I was burnt out I couldn't have done my job at that point anymore yeah Yeah, it was gnarly it was gnarly and and it stress but stress leave though too is not 
always the same as a burnout? No. They, they're similar, but they're not always related. So I think that situation was, uh, it was just not a great situation anyway. And so I, I yeah. felt embarrassed by my burnout. But I felt really like I was humi- like, humiliated by it. Yeah, yeah. So I guess what I mean is like you can, you can get burnt out, but you're not stressed. You're just like. You're done. Yeah. It's just like, I mean, burnt out with this. But, uh, I so, was stressed too. So oh, yeah. with Ryan's stress leave, it's like she was stressed and then she left. Yeah. And then it was like, like midday and it was right. right before we were supposed to go on a vacation yeah. and midday. I called Matt and I was just, I'm, I'm done. I guess I'm done. <laughs> yeah. And then she went for the week and it was supposed to be the rest of that week. And then we had uh, two weeks vacation or whatever it was. Yeah, and I was going to go and back 10 after days that, vacation. Yeah. And then they were like, I don't really want to go into much yeah. detail about that. Yeah. But having said that, like, even if, if that hadn't happened, something kind of anomalous happened during that. Um, and I did. Like if the vacation had been normal and I, and the day had come where I was supposed to go back, I don't think I could have. Like right. I think I said yeah. to Matt that I would, but I don't think there was any way mentally or physically that I would have been able to do that at that point. No, you were done. I was done. And so I took that I took about a month and a bit and then I went back to work part time and then I went back to work full time and I'm just now feeling fantastic again. Right. I'm just n- now feeling that I can tackle any project and I'm not getting overwhelmed by by the stresses. I'm just taking the ball and going with it rather than thinking about what went wrong and why the ball didn't land where I thought it was going to. I'm just picking it up where it lands and going. Right. And so, I couldn't do that before. So like with in in my case, I just feel burnt out. I don't feel any stress. Okay. So I can't, I couldn't say I need to take a burnout leave because I don't no. think it would have the same effect. So I'd have to call it, I'm, I have to take a stress leave. Or a mental yeah. health day. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just, it's, but it's, it can, that's what I mean by it's not, it's part of it, but it's not like always the full, mm-hmm. full scope and not always the same thing. Yeah. Being like just over it in that moment or for a period of time, like when I'm stressed out and Ryan will ask like, are like, is everything okay? And I'll, I'll typically say like, my brain is melted right now. Like I can still work. I can still think of new ideas, all that, but it's just like, it just feels like a puddle of goo that needs to like, like just reform with mm-hmm. nothing like poking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I could work for it. Like I got good at working through like insanely stressful situations. Like when Ryan was home with the, when the kids were little and then I had, you know, two full-time jobs designing and it's just like, it never ends. And then, you know, when I was 27, mm-hmm. I had mm-hmm. stage three hypertension. The doctor said, uh, right now and it's going to get worse when in your current state you've already shaved a decade off your lifespan <laughs> and I was 27 and it was just working 20 hours a day right. and it was just like eating like shit not exercising not taking care of life just like trying to swat every fly that comes near you mm-hmm. and then they're like here's all these pills and I said what can I do outside of pills because I don't like my dad's on blood well he, I don't know if he still is anyway he was on like blood pressure medication and I was like, why don't you just do things to lower your blood pressure? He's like, well, that's what the pills do. Mm. I was like, no, that's a p- blood pressure Band-Aid. You're not fixing yeah. anything. You're just masking it with a drug. He's like, well, it works. I was like, you're not eliminating shit from your life. You're just making it smell better. Yeah. And that's nasty. So I, I turned it around and, and within like a month I went back and they're like, no, you're you have corrected. Like a lot of it was diet. A lot of it was, you know, working less you know, walking more, just being a human. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, within like a month, they're like, no, keep it up and you'll you'll be fine. I find sometimes you will even reach a point where you just need to laugh at some el- someone else's misfortune <laughs> oh. online or or watch a, a sad video and have a, oh, have yeah. a good little tear up and then you <laughs> feel like you're semi-human again. Yeah. And then you can kind of go back yeah, to you, life. Yeah, it's like you have to like, it's almost like when you have like an old car and like you're you're stepping on the gas and it's just like sputtering and sputtering and then you just feel like if I just stomp on it, in my head there's like a a, a chunk of crap in the muffler that's just gonna get blasted out and it's just gonna like run perfectly after that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, having like watching like uh, I don't know after you have kids anything makes you cry. <laughs> oh my and, god, anything makes you cry. Yeah. What was the trailer we were watching the other day? <laughs> and I didn't want you to see that I was crying, but I was absolutely crying. Zombieland too. No, what oh. were we watching? What trailer did we just Zuckerberg's watch? Zuckerberg's Revenge. 
Um, oh, it was the Mr. Rogers one with Tom Hanks. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I was, yeah. I was just like, don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ugly crying. This is how I live now. Oh. See, I, I watched and I felt nothing because I wasn't a Mr. Rogers kid. I was a uh, Mr. Jessup. I watched yeah. Mr. Jess. We I, was a, I was an only child, so I was raised by TV, and so I was Mr. Rogers, Mr. Jessup, Sesame Street, just that whole, were, all of that. Were you stuff. on board with the Friendly Giant? Yeah, I oh, was. No, that one was a time. weird one. No, the, way, the worst one was Captain Kangaroo. Oh, yeah. That was the American. Ping pong balls. I don't think I ever saw that. But they came back in like the 80s, like when he was like 70, and but he still had this, like the weird, like fucked up, like Amish <laughs> serial yeah. killer yeah. wig. <laughs> and it's like, I'm talking to a can of marmalade. It's like, why is it in a can? It's like, oh, I'm Captain Kangaroo. It's like, this is insane. And there was like the polka dot door and other things. The polka I'm yeah. waiting. I'm waiting yeah. for those movies to come out. Today's special. <laughs> did you guys watch today's special? No, because. Oh, I, yeah. With a little mannequin. mannequin I did, guy. Yeah, I did that not, was weird. I did not like the concept of it as a child and i didn't get it why a mannequin came to life yet there was a puppet security guard why, also why was there an influx influx of mannequin related media during that time period that's like where the movie mannequin came out yeah. too probably oh, yeah oh my god it was just like it's a just trope all then. a precursor to real dolls and <laughs> ripple sensation jerk off suits yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's coming Which we're becoming symbiotic I are going to be recommended for burnout they're going to have your oh your, i wonder if that they're going to have ripple rooms oh Ugh. But that could work if you're just like, I'm so stressed out. I don't even want to like, like, I don't want to inflict me on you. Mm -hmm. I just want this flesh colored. Well, only till after I'm done. Then you, I'm yeah. inflicting me on you. I just want this elect. And you're going to be infected by me. Electronic flesh covered balloon jerk off suit to like melt my tensions away. <laughs> All right. We're ordering one. Okay. Yeah, actually, we do need a sponsor now because we, 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 I guess we have to order two because we're not going to share. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I would like the backs to be attached with Velcro. Yeah, two, <laughs> get two people in at the same time. <laughs> oh. uh, loads of plenty. So I think with this, it's it's a it's a real thing, and I think people should be more aware of it. Like myself, wasn't aware of the actual signs of it, and we're just thinking yeah. it was an off day. And I think it's a real uh, serious thing, and and it always leads into uh, mental issues as well. I think so. That one thing I saw preparing for the show, and if anybody doesn't use Headspace, give it a shot. It's awesome. It's a meditation app. I myself haven't used it in like a year. I should definitely start using it again just because it's good to maintain just like shutting up and doing nothing for like 10 minutes. And they walk you through it. And the guy has a very British voice, which is very relaxing. Mm -hmm. It's very British. So anyway, I found this. Um, <laughs> animation they put up on YouTube it's today. An extra very British. It's just it's just twenty minutes of somebody saying aluminium <laughs> pudding <laughs> pudding. Uh, so Lift. so um, if you don't know Headspace, they do all these like well done little animations, and they kind of explain the concepts uh, usually with like animals and little creatures and stuff. But this one, I really 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 liked, and uh, it might sound strange. But a really useful analogy for meditation practice is an elephant. Often in life, we want to get everything done as quickly as possible. But when it comes to learning, that's maybe not the most skillful approach. But if you think about an elephant and the way that it moves, there's something really majestic about it. It's steady, it's slow, but it keeps moving forward. And with meditation, it's about regular, consistent practice, just showing up time and time again. Just like our elephant, we might be walking along a very flat surface, we might be walking up a hill or down a hill. It might be passing through a clear open space or a dense sticky jungle. Ooh, that's sticky. The elephant doesn't really mind. It just focuses on one step and then the next and then the next. If we can bring this quality to our meditation practice, then we don't have to worry about progress or we'll be in a hurry to get anywhere. And we don't have to stop because we've overexerted ourselves. We just keep going with that gentle, steady, consistent effort. So I like that quite a bit because of... Yeah. It was delightful. Yeah. It's, so, I, wasn't, I wasn't bored by it. No, no, it's, it's, it's great. Um, what I really liked is when I got a studio job last year, uh, because I... I, like I said earlier, I, I can obsess about projects and get, you know, tons of research and get way too into them. What I feel is an appropriate level of like, 
obsession and enthusiasm. Uh, but other people say, oh, you're intense and you're an asshole. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Um, but I, last year when I got a studio job, I said, it, it'll be so easy for me to work all the time for these people like I work for, for our company. Um, but this isn't my company. Yeah. And I have to draw lines from day one about when I will and when I will not work. Mm-hmm. So I would get there every day at like 8, 8.30. I would leave at 4, 4.30. Um, I didn't check email or Slack or anything at home, uh, evenings or weekends. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, they're like, yeah, so you have a couple pretty crazy deadlines coming up. I was like, yep, I'm not worried about it. I'll, I'll get it done. It's mm-hmm. fine. And they're like, okay, well, you know, there's, they actually need it like three days sooner now or whatever it was. And I'm like, you know, they need it for a reason that they didn't tell us about uh from the onset, you didn't, as a project manager, didn't interview them adequately enough to get all this information out. So while there's three fewer days to get it done, it's not because of my fuck up. So tell them no, mm-hmm. and they'll have it in three days. Yeah. And that's what it was. So like in the the Headspace video with the elephant analogy, it's like just keep moving and yeah, it'll go uphill and downhill and all that, but just... It's like if you start trying to sprint uphill, you're going to get gassed yeah, out. If you if you sprint downhill, you're going to, you know, you could trip and just fall down the whole goddamn thing. This a similar analogy could be made about fuel efficiency of of uh gas-powered vehicles. Mm-hmm. You want to keep a cars. Uh automobiles. <laughs> you want to keep a, a steady Dirigibles. a steady speed. Um and that's your best efficiency for gas. If you yep. floor it and then drop back and floor it, then you're reducing your efficiency. But if you just go at a steady pace, you know when you're going to get there <laughs> without all these like bumps and jumps. And That's kind of funny, actually, because in, like running, in running yeah. to burn the most calories, you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to do sprints and then slow down and then well, sprint. Y- and then slow the, down. The, so that makes sense. So that's that burning to burn guys. out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's the, the, the methodology of the... Is it hit or height? Hit? Hit training? High high intensity high eat. interval uh, intramural <laughs> intervals In, intramural <laughs> round robin training interspecies <laughs> relations intervals yeah yes. uh, and yeah it is to like expel the maximum amount of but it's like yeah. I don't want to do that for a, a job for work. yeah no, you don't want yeah. to yeah I'm also not a paid athlete <laughs> to do that yeah yeah like at at my work I just had the client tease that like hey can we have that two weeks sooner. And my coworkers are like, well, what do you think? I was like, nope. Yeah. They're like, are you, well, you know, if they need it, like, can you do it? I was like, no, it's, it cannot be done properly in that time. Yeah. So nope. And then they came back and they're like, well, I talked to the client and and we said no. And they said, yeah, no problem. It's funny because over the last, like, five years or so the agile methodology has really become a big thing and so project sprints are regular and all project managers try to make it seem like it's a really fun thing to let's just get into the sprint together but really it's doing exactly what we just talked about is like all right hurry up but the but the other part for those agile sprints that nobody ever seems to remember is that if something doesn't get done it just gives moved to the next one yeah Yeah. and it's like we tried but you know, it took a little longer than we anticipated, and yeah. it's now in the next release. It's like, nobody yeah. should be... And it works mm-hmm. great for product-based companies, where it's just like yeah. five groups go off and come up with ideas and then b- just rudimentarily like build it out, and then just we'll see what works. And then like it's great for idea generation if you have people and money and no no real finish line other than a quality item at the end of the exercise. Yeah. Uh, but the exercise can take longer than you'd hope. Do you, do either of you have after this discussion, anything you would change <laughs> when you go back to work on the next day? My underwear. <laughs> uh, well, for me, no, hold on. Okay. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Sorry, would it change when you go back to work? Yeah. Like, like after the vacation? No. So I'm talking about like after this discussion, uh, you know, is there anything that you've thought of that maybe could help? I, I think after I had my, um, it, like my um, kind of like epiphany breakdown 
apocalypse last year um and then just coming back to work i think <laughs> over just over the last few months i'm hitting my stride so yep. i don't think anything was groundbreaking for me perhaps in this discussion mm -hmm. but i definitely think over i've been able to put some perspective and thought into how what causes me to burn mm -hmm. out and i'm able to mitigate that better than i could before so i'm just going to keep on doing yeah. kind of the elephant thing that was a great analogy for yeah. how i've been switching things up headspace is great yeah i think i'd like to Very try British. scheduling my day from start to finish mm -hmm. well, that's tough i know it's tough like people can well that's, yeah, but, yeah. that's the you, other part and you can document how your day got off and then yep. you can adjust yeah it. so i yeah. and also like trying to be better at saying no to those wrenches being thrown in like hey do you have five minutes to discuss something and that turns into like a a heated discussion about whatever. Yeah. And it's like deflecting those, be like, no, you can send a message or we can plan something, but this will throw off my day and my productivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tr just trying to keep that pace of like, if I, if you plan things out and you know what's happening throughout your day, then I think it's easier to keep that. Like, oh, I know what's going on. And there's no, like, I, in life, I try to plan for the unexpected, but it doesn't help to have like unexpected things happen. Yeah, unexpected things like when I come back from the vacation, uh, what I want to do different is like there will always be the parts of the job that that are that can be annoying, and you know, the, whenever you're involved in a process with other people, it can be frustrating. Uh, what I want to do is to be able to spend a lot more time on the things where I add value, mm -hmm. and just like straight up say. I'd, I'm not required in that meeting. I'm in that meeting every week and I never talk. So I'm just going to keep making the stuff and then you guys organize the world, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. But wh where I work, I'm very much in a bubble mm -hmm. and they just leave me to make things and include me in, you know, formal, you know, we're doing this and we're doing that, which is, it's nice to be included. But at the same time, like I work completely alone for 95% of the time. So I'm just going to state, you know, the process is upsetting me. Um, so it, me being involved in everybody else discussing the process isn't helping me. It's mm -hmm. So why don't I just work while you guys figure out how you want to work? Because yeah. I work, I, g I get there, I start, I go until I'm done, and then I leave. And I get mm -hmm. a huge amount of work done during the week. And uh, we'll just do that. What what I always... Oh, sorry. Oh, no. I was just going to say that kind of plays into how I'm trying to st restructure things at our agency is um, I, I, I'm trying to run our production meetings differently where I create a bird's eye view of everybody's day for every day of the week. And so everybody can yep. see. And then I've been categorizing tasks as red or yellow and green. And green ones can kind of move throughout the week, but red ones are immovable. And that's the work that you can't be in interrupted yeah. for a meeting that you don't necessarily be need to be in. And I think it's been really helpful for other people in our office to see how tight everyone's days are because mm -hmm. I don't think anyone realizes that. So when you were talking about that, Marcus, about how you'd like to schedule every part of your day, I think it's really important that you make that somewhere where your coworkers can see so they can yep. see what your day is actually made up of. Yeah, I mean, at least with like Google calendars for if you have it set up for work, they can see it anytime. Mm -hmm. I mean, it won't they won't see it on theirs, but they have to look at it. But at mm -hmm. least like... Yeah, banking that time and letting people know, like, I, I'm not attending this meeting. I have to have yeah. a working session where I'm heads down, uninterrupted. Yeah, so I get made fun of at my work because as the project manager, I have everybody's Google Calendar on my calendar. So when you open it up, it yeah. looks ridiculous, but it's so valuable when I'm scheduling meetings because <laughs> I won't schedule a designer uh, for a meeting on a day when he could possibly be on a project all day without being interrupted. Mm -hmm. Like I try to do all my meetings on a day. So it's a meetings day. Cause let's face it. It's really hard to get back into like deep work once you've been called out to do client. Yeah. Cause stuff. I think maybe where that idea is coming from is that if somebody sees an opening in your calendar mm -hmm. and they're like, Oh, they're available. I'll book them for a meeting, even though you might be in the middle of something, but you yeah. haven't, yeah. you haven't, Scheduled it yourself. One valuable thing that I, I, I got from that four hour work week book, like I read it like six years ago or something like that, yeah. was every day just in your schedule, like in your public calendar, you put like from uh, two o'clock until four o'clock or whatever and just, and just have it 
labeled as like Matt's uninterrupted working time. Mm -hmm. And then, so I implemented it at a place I was working with at the time. And then people like, oh, so can I not bother you during this time? I'm like, no, you may not. Mm -hmm. And they're like, why? I'm like, because I'm working. And they're like, what if I have a question? I was like, email it. Mm -hmm. And then when I am out of that window, then I will read my emails. Mm -hmm. And then there's a few people that were a little pissy about it. But after like a couple of weeks, everyone was just like, no, we just don't bother them during that time. And what I found, and the book predicted this at the, um, as well, was if the person's not there to, like if you're not the first line of defense against something that really has nothing to do with you, mm -hmm. but you can't answer it because you're not an idiot, these people are figuring out their own problems. It's also uh, a, a, a time respectfulness because mm -hmm. if they don't respect your time that you are trying to put forward that's yeah. working, then, then they just don't respect people's time in general and the value yeah. of it. Um, I also think like a lot of meetings could be a Slack thread or an email. Yeah. What I so years ago when I worked at Thrifties, Thrifty Foods, smiles in the aisles for oh, you. You beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna do that. Um, <laughs> we had like our department communication booklet. And anytime that there was a new thing that would go in it, every day you, when you started, you had to read whatever was new in there. And then you had to sign it saying that you read it. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything out there that allows you to do that. Because there's stuff that's like says you've seen it. But is yeah. there anything out there that says that you've acknowledged it? Because I'm just thinking like, if there's a note that's important that people to read, you wouldn't just want to send an email. Hopefully they read it. But like no. sending it to your your department and then they have to like check off like i yeah. read this and i understand this and i acknowledge this mm -hmm. in their time that they decide to read it and not like okay we gotta have a meeting about this yeah i think that i mean you're also hoping for the best of people i sure am if they <laughs> reply to your message like looks great thanks a lot doesn't mean they read it but yeah. you <laughs> but there's that paper trail of I sent it to you. You said looks great, thanks. And th and then two weeks later, if they're like, well, I didn't actually read it. I'm like, well, you shouldn't yeah. actually fucking lied then. Like, yeah, I've like been now, now we're right. in a position where you need changes. But guess what? You already approved this. We've already billed for it, and we can talk about extra fees and extra time later yeah. on. But yeah. I've I've also had high expectations of people at every job I've had, and uh, the kitchen is the <laughs> sign that lets me down. Yeah. That Every job I've ever had, there's somebody who's just like, there's the dishwasher. There, I mean, granted, I do this at home sometimes, but that's my goddamn house. Yeah. <laughs> there's the dishwasher. There's the sink. The dishwasher's empty. It's like, I'll just put it on the counter. Yeah. And walk away. You know, like, or there's food in the communal like counter. And you're like, anyways. So all this stuff, calendars and dirty kitchens and all that mm -hmm. if you're experiencing burnout it can be the end of the world yeah, exactly. and uh it just means that you need to, to uh just walk like an elephant and just just fucking make make sure you next time you're in the shower you give yourself a little self-evaluation to see if you got burnout is that a <laughs> finger in the bum or a... do you need to have, a... <laughs> I have so many questions is it crying actually. is Where it masturbating uh it's just a little bit all of... three? Oh yeah it's all of it i guess you don't need your hands to cry put on your ripple suit and uh Find in the out, shower? Find out if you got That's a lump or two. All right. Well, I'll get a lump or two. Uh, so, yeah, if you're burnt out, if that didn't help you, then <laughs> try another podcast or... I, don't I know, recommend taking a month off. <laughs> or like my favorite line in the movie Signs with Sir Mel Gibson when his kids were all wearing foil helmets and were freaking out about the aliens and they're reading the book and he just said, everybody just needs to calm down and eat some fruit or something. <laughs> so that's our recommendation. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be taking a quiz to see if we're burnt out. So why don't you take a pee or something? Shut your mouth. <laughs> Stay back, Chris. Back off. This is the fucking worst. I'm not a nudist. No way. Go away. 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 Go away.
It'll fall right off. It'll fall. Okay. This is not working, okay? I'm not ashamed to say it. It's too, even when at its smallest position, it's too fucking big. And I'm now tying, ow, it around my thing. Ah, ow, ow, fuck, ow, ow, shit. And I'm getting fingered again. Because now you can start recording. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The rule is we don't talk until Marcus gets fingered, and <laughs> Daddy, then it's just like a series of yells. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I'm picturing uh, the meat. Pie. I don't work at a cheese factory. We're working at a cheese sandwich factory. <laughs> That's a good line. Oh, um, Freddie got fingered, y'all. Mm. Stay in school, or uh, that could happen to you. Or don't. So we're going to take a burnout self-test. Subtitle, checking yourself for burnout. I think that was pretty much covered by the first heading. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Not wrecking yourself. Yeah, so it says, uh, burnout occurs when passionate, committed people, oh, shut up, <laughs> become de- deeply disillusioned with a job or career from which they have previously derived much of their identity and meaning. It comes as <gasps> the things that inspire power. Anyway. No, no, wait. <laughs> this is interesting, though, because this is something that I was going to bring up before, but we didn't have the chance. <clears throat> but there's a lot of stuff on social media right now from people our age. Tons of stuff. That no, from people <laughs> our age that were considered gifted as children and yeah. were always really praised for being smart and intellectual and just haven't found or found fulfillment in a career early on and it's just kind of fizzled out and that's why there's such a high prevalence of depression in people our age right now. So that's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Oh. But but that's also like uh, um, was it the snowflake syndrome? Y- yes, I, n- I know exactly Wait. what you're saying. It's so like yeah, s- we, s- we talking cucks. You, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a new cucks. sport. Everybody's talking about cucky, cuck talk, cuck. like hockey, <laughs> red, cucks. red hot cuck talk. Uh, okay, <laughs> but if you told a kid, every kid that they were gifted, mm-hmm. and that they were. Sp- so I realize this is going in a okay, set, so like a down. We haven't direction. told all of our kids that they're hey, gifted. By the okay. way, I don't know if you're aware. I do not have kids, so I give yeah. all the advice about raising children. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Famously sterile. Fuck. Um, yeah, I think Ghost I think loads. you're right. I think in in some cases it, de- it definitely is kind of the snow snowflake syndrome, but um, the cut conundrum. Yes, it, it kind of it, it also I feel like it leads also back to the don't forget about me, Jeselnik. Mm-hmm. Like the thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget about I'm me. still here too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. All right. So, on yeah. Whatever the reason is for feeling burned out, it's not like feeling better has a paycheck. So let's. Although on that note, uh, do you have that article? Oops. Uh, that you can send. Uh, yeah. I, I would uh, like to read it. Yeah, for sure. I, there's a ton of them. I'll try to find two or three of them, and I'll send those. Yeah. Thumbs it's, up. That's it's aces. interesting, but I mean, you can. I think anybody can see themselves in anything. I, when I was reading. I was like, oh, it's me. That's why. That's why I screwed up my 30s so badly. I was. I just wasn't special anymore. I'm just like Einstein. It turns <laughs> yeah, out. Exactly. They're, they're I wasn't being stimulated, so I spun into self-destructive behavior. Uh, <laughs> for for a few years in elementary. I went to uh, another school once a week mm-hmm. um, for creative thought. Yeah. And so like you, a creative thought and problem solving. Mm-hmm. And it was like myself and pretty much all my friends. Okay. That my close friends that we all thought just slightly outside the box. Yeah. And so it made us feel like we were special. Yeah. I mean, y- yeah. You, you're That's just all autistic? No, we're now all in computers in some fashion or design. No. Except for one's an archaeologist, which... Mm. I don't know what happened with them. Loser. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I'll they definitely, I'll dirt. share the links because oh, I think shit. something that's so interesting about it is um, when you were talking about you want to be bored and you relish being bored and Matt and I were talking about um, like boredom just, for me, boredom isn't an option. When I'm bored, I make bad decisions and I get kind of self-destructive and so I definitely <laughs> need <laughs> the kind of job where I'm not like, oh, sorry, go on. What? I, what sorry, I just want to clarify what, uh, my meaning of boredom. It's not like, I'm bored. I'm gonna go break something. But no. you you give your brain a chance to have free thought right. and like create things in, in it. Like 
you just create a story in your head out of nothing or an which, idea. Which with kids, that's our entire existence with them because yeah. we raised them on on every movie that we watch and all like. Our daughter's favorite band is Tenacious D. Mm-hmm. She only has a clean songs, but it's, it's her favorite band. Like it's like we have made little like m- mirrored version monsters of ourselves mm-hmm. that we can talk to, and it's just like have the ridiculous release, well, which yeah. is but which is important. So when you're so when you're constantly feeding screens input, mm-hmm. like your phone or your laptop or whatever, that's taking away your brain from having its own thoughts. I think you're absolutely right. But I think for myself and probably a lot of people around our age, um, computers and screens and stuff have been so ingrained into our very existence for so long now that it's almost... I Like, I myself, Matt and I were having this conversation the other day, I can't turn it off. Like, I'm jealous that you can just just turn it off. Like, for mm-hmm. me, there's... Um, and I've, I've been like that since I was little. Like, I, can, I can't just watch a movie or a TV show. I have to be... Um, like, when I was little, I'd be playing on my Game Boy while a movie was on. Like, I can't just do one thing at a time oh, at I, all. Oh, really? Yeah, it's really... It's frustrating. Or I have to be crocheting. Like, there's no way I could just watch a show ever. I can... I, I Yeah, I guess that's... I don't know if that's a personality thing or what. Because I can just sit there... And do nothing mm-hmm. and be content with that. I'm or I can so just jealous and just that. watch one thing and remain perfectly still mm-hmm. and not move. So for me, when I can do that, that's a red flag that I'm like going into like a depression <laughs> for real. <laughs> Maybe I'm just constantly depressed. No, you're not though. I think it's really good because you're using it for, po- you just said it's one of your, your um, not coping mechanisms, but it's like one of the ways that you relieve your burnout is by d- doing that. And I think that's amazing. Mm. That's the whole point of med- meditation, right? Sorry, that's, Matt. that's how Marcus relieves himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With the, the power of thought. Uh. So our burnout self-test, I assume, because it gives you a score at the end, I assume these are one to five. Yeah. So I would say for each one, um, e- everybody here has a pen and piece of paper. Mm-hmm. Just write down. How many, how many questions? I think there's 10. Okay. Uh, so if you write down just the value of your answer for that one. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, we'll add them all up and see how fucking, I don't know, how good we are, okay. dead so we are. The choices right now are not at <clears throat> all, rarely, sometimes, often. I was going to say that. Oh, sorry. I was just saying which one. I was going to say that. But what's, the, shut up what's the statement, though? No, I think we would. I was just wondering what's one and what's five in this scenario. One is the lower one. One and five is the higher one. <laughs> I deserve that because I stepped on your toes there. I'm God sorry. Goddamn, it's my house. I, I know, take care I'm of my sorry. kids. Uh, not today. Um, so yeah, scale f- uh, one to five <laughs> from not at all to very often, and f- three other ones in the middle. Really That's how I describe it. Uh, so yeah, let's get it started. Um, first one is I feel run down and drained of physical or emotional energy. Also, feel free to do this while you're listening. Mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah, live it up. Here. Now it feels like you're in the room with us. Marcus will sing a song while you get a pen. Go get a pen from your desk or your neighbor's desk or steal it. Are they at work right now in your, in your <laughs> song? <laughs> or the, they go to the neighbor's house? Yeah. <laughs> They're at work. Especially if they're, they're driving <laughs> around the bus. All right. If you didn't have enough time to get a pen, then you, you just didn't even want to do this quiz. And you won't know if this website thinks you're burnt, burnt out or not. So I feel run down and drained of physical or emotional energy. Not at all to very often. I've, But you can be like ramped up of emotional energy, but dr- <laughs> drained of like positive energy. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's it's a it's an internet quiz. Oh man, these are gonna throw me off. Yeah, this is like the last one where you took the you took Crystal's design quiz and ranging all the way from Joey Tribbiani <laughs> to SpongeBob <laughs> for the answers. Oh boy! And uh, yeah, he he did. I awesome. passed. Um, I uh, I qualify for a graphic designer. Yeah. So feel run down, drain. Yeah. All right. Next one. Uh, 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 I have negative thoughts about my job. What is higher than five? Six. Uh, uh, JK, y'all. JK Rowling. It's, it's a fine job. Um, all right. Next one. I'm harder and less sympathetic with people than perhaps they deserve. 
Uh, I'm going to give myself a low one on that because I think everybody deserves what I provide them. I know you think that. And narcissistic so is this in, Is this just in regards to your job, then not in regards to like uh, like your overall mental yeah. outlook? Do whatever you want. Okay. It's internet quiz. I was... Uh, yeah, okay. I'm saying it's as official as an internet <laughs> quiz, so you can say, you know, this is how I felt when I was 11 and gauge it on that, but... Number four, I am easily irritated by small problems or by my coworkers and team. Marcus just wrote a big never on his paper. You have to write the number. Um, were you writing? Oh, I thought you were writing the entire word. No. Or words. That would be a stretch for me. Uh, number five is I feel misunderstood or unappreciated by my coworkers. Well... I wouldn't if they appreciated or understood me. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. All right. I feel that I have no one to talk to. Is that why we speak into microphones? Perhaps. <laughs> and then you Our ghost it, friend. You said it to a delay so that you sound like you're talking to yourself. Yeah. In my vibrating, We're talking to somebody. In my ripple suit. Nothing's more erotic than the sound of my own nasally drone. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, why did I write six? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Because <laughs> oh, it was question six. You, f- you feel like you have less than no one to talk to. <laughs> I, I think that's a dig at me. <laughs> I bought a Ouija board. Just a so horrible wife. I needed to let it go. Uh, seven, I feel that I am achieving less than I should. Mm. Wah, wah, wah. Number eight, I feel... Under an unpleasant level of pressure to succeed. Uh, that would imply people are paying attention. Uh, nine, I feel that I am not getting what I want out of my job. Fuck, I wrote eight for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have the Theo Huxtable disease. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 sympathizing with Bill Cosby. B- basically, the no, whole. No, Theo. Basically, the, he was dyslexic in the show. The episode just played r- in rapid speed in my head. Yeah. And sitting in the in principal's office. Yeah. Really? Doctor says he can't read good. I don't remember. He can't read none too good. I remember, like, Cliff going and talking to him in his room about it. I don't remember the. Yeah, they, they went to the school and it's like, drink. he just learns differently. Mm. And um, I don't know what happened to anybody mm. from that show. Um, (laughs) Don't worry, it's fine There's no way any of them are a sexual monster And in jail uh, Except for maybe Rudy Or Raven, Simone Hey, it's Raven Coming at you Uh, (laughs) Ten, I feel that I am in the wrong organization Or the wrong profession It's crazy how different my answers would have been In July 2018 it's a, it's a, I wish it was worded. Sometimes I question whether I... <laughs> it's like, <laughs> did I really make the right decision? 11, I am frustrated with parts of my job. Wow. I need longer paper. Just because I'm writing in a very unclever way, it's going off the end. Uh, 12, I feel that organizational politics or bureaucracy, really, bureaucracy frustrate my ability to do a good job. Ooh, I got a little sharpie squeak on that one. <laughs> uh, Thirteen. I feel that there is more work to do than I practically have the ability to do. Let's see, an answer. Oh, there's more than ten. Because we're on fourteen. I feel that I do not have t- time to do many of the things that are important to doing a good quality job. Do you have time to do? It's other people's time I'm worried about. Uh, Fifteen, I find that I do not have time to plan as much as I would like to. Fuck, will this ever end? Hey, it ended. (laughs) Did everybody listening have a pen? You go to your neighbor's house? All right. Oh, crap. Um, It's fine. We just have to add up our numbers. Yeah. All right, everybody. Yeah. Oh, Mark's using calculator because he is a modern millennial man. <laughs> a modern Matt Damon. All right. Um, oh, I screwed it up already. One second. I'm going to... I just realized that there's nothing more entertaining than people adding. <laughs> so 
I'm done. Carry the. All right, you guys talk oh, while I oh. add then, because right. I've been vamping my dick off over here. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Vamp dick. Too. We didn't actually talk. We didn't fill the air with anything. Are you done? Are, you are, done we, are we supposed to share our scores? I'm going right. to count mine so I can stop talking. Oh, okay. You guys can talk right. so I can... Well, we can yeah. talk about the score S- interpretation. Sure. So the, right. the score is... Uh, score, if you scored uh, 15 to 18, you've got no sign of burnout. If you've scored 19 to 32, little sign of burnout here, and that hmm. some factors are particularly severe, which is very specific. If you <laughs> scored 33 to 49, be careful. You might be at risk of burnout particularly if several scores are high. Mm. 50 to 59, you are at severe risk of burnout. You are basically on fire and do something about this urgently. And 60 to 75, you are dead. Oh, boy. Uh, you are at severe risk of burnout. Do something about this urgently or you will fall over and die. I have to say I'm surprised. I um, I didn't think mm. I was going to land where I landed on that scale at all. all right, but, well, I, but I would have been off the charts. Let's go around the horn. All right. Ryan, what did you get for a score? I scored a 38. Um, yeah. It was higher than I thought it was going to be, but I didn't know it was going to put me in the be careful segment of things. Mm. So You may be at risk of burnout, particularly if several scores are high. And I found that my scores, though, were things that were out of my control. I'm pretty pleased with our processes, and I have a lot of freedom to make things better, but it's the things that are out of my control that are putting me at risk to burnout, apparently. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if those things are... Uh, controllable or like changeable or if it's just like I, well, there's nothing that yeah so it's uh, so i got my five was number 13 i can't remember what the question was it was if you could scroll up a bit please um number 15 time Thir- will tell 13 13 i feel that there is more work to do than i practically have the ability I to mean, do. i hit that issue we had a huge project a few humongous deadlines this week but one in particular i was having i was i act as the middleman at not the middleman or woman kinda, which is yeah, fine nowadays i'm the liaison between two different teams and i was trying to explain to one team um, that um, what they wanted done was just going to be impossible in the amount of time that was left to do it, and there was just they they just weren't getting that um, that that I, as Matt likes to say, everything takes time. So even brushing your teeth takes up time that you think you have to get to the bus, right? And so that's why you do it on the toilet. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why you do it in the toilet. Poop in the shower. So that was my number five, and then I got fours for 14 and 15. And um, so well. I feel I don't have enough time to do many of the things that are important to doing a good job, and a quality job. Sometimes things just need to get out of the door in this industry, and I find what I, I do not have time to plan as so, much as I would so like. So 13, 14, 15 are all time-related. They are all time-related, and I think it's the amount of, yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marcus? I got a grand total score of 82. I think I did this wrong. Uh, no, I got 42. Um, so I'm in the same column mm. category as you are, which makes sense due to vacation and how I'm feeling about that vacation. of really, really looking forward to not doing work. You got your yeah. casual pants on tonight, I noticed. Uh, yeah, these are my cool joggers. Cause <laughs> <laughs> no, explain them. Uh, I bought these. Nobody asked you to explain your pants. Uh, I bought these from H H&M, and M uh, as Higgins and Morlock pants that I could wear in Magician the morning store, and then still feel okay about going to the store in them. See, are you saying an, they they can take you from the boardroom to the ballroom? Uh, we'll define ballroom. <laughs> Dancing the bathroom. Oh, okay. Sorry that. The ball I call the the, the ball pit at Burger King. The, the ballroom, ball pit. <laughs> so Marcus has a that's a normal thought for a person to have. Matt, Marcus thought about I've having comfortable clothes and not sleeping in denim cutoffs. I've never taken <laughs> Matt pride sleeps in de- he's like a wolf. If you're from gonna Twilight. wake up, okay, <laughs> seriously, like no joke. Weird. If you're gonna wake up <laughs> in the front yard covered in deer blood because you turned into a werewolf the night before, what would you hope you're wearing? And cut off jeans. <laughs> something Classic with, werewolf. <laughs> something with stretch. Yeah. Well, the Hulk, I mean, he's got special pants because he's a scientist. So he makes special, special pants. <laughs> I figure I'm just getting a bit bigger and a bit hairier. Oh, my God. But I want to be comfortable. I want something that moves. I also want to look kind of cool in the yard it's when I'm wiping the blood off my face. I, yeah. 
You, I don't wear like a wallet chain to bed. <laughs> it's it's you, up there. You <laughs> slept in denim shorts. Don't say I sleep yeah, in I was denim say, shorts. Please don't say slept like it's a singular incident. He's, but it's, it's he often. But it's not like a never nude shorts. thing. But I'll show it, my wiener. But is it? Is <laughs> so it then I'll zip it back now, up again. Yeah. Hold on. Now is it? I I chose to go to sleep like this, or I passed out no, like this. No, it's a it's changing <laughs> out of long denim pants into cut off denim pants. So for sleeping. I, I don't have clothes that are. <laughs> more comfortable than the ones I'm wearing because with the Lemmy mindset of when he's at home, he drinks whiskey out of a red solo cup. So when he's on the road, it tastes as good as it does at home. (laughs) I don't have a fallback to be more comfortable than I, like whenever anybody sees me, that's the (laughs) most formal and the most comfortable clothes that I have. Those are just what I have. He does get ready faster than I do. (laughs) So, all right, we've, so we've all learned something here. Hey, uh-huh. my score. Yeah, let's hear We haven't score. learned my score. 47. Hmm. So we're all in the same bucket. Oh, oh wow. Well, That's surprising. I'm a cuspman. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, yeah, we're all going to die sooner than we would have liked, no. but not as soon as uh, our project managers would like. I don't know. I don't think... I think it, it's a good. It was good to do this test because now we can make positive changes. No, nope, Marcus is out of here though. I was watching that happen for a while. <laughs> I just kept trying to turn the microphone, but obviously I didn't nope, screw you, it to the table. You mentioned enough. the Incredible Hulk once, and this <laughs> guy starts. Flippin'? He starts slapping his biceps and like mean staring everybody down, mean mugging, <laughs> <laughs> and he ripped his goddamn microphone stand off the table. Well, we definitely need a sponsor now because we have to replace this whole table. There we go. Um, and if you want to sponsor us, don't. Yeah, screw <laughs> you. What are you, an idiot? Uh, but if you do, we'll, uh, we'll, oh. give, we'll give you money. Yeah, to not sponsor <laughs> us. Yeah. Uh, we have one listener question uh, from Nick Stick Designs on Instagram. I wrote in Instagram, which I guess is technically true. Yeah, I only see her in it. Um, and she also men- mentioned that she loves the show, which proves that the show is okay, or she's mentally ill. <laughs> And God bless you, and, and possibly God bless us for that as well. A little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. Hey, variety is a spice of disorder. Uh, so Nick Stick Designs on Instagram says, in regards to burnout, getting a good night's sleep has really helped me recently. It can be hard to say no to that extra project, but mental health is so important. I work in the health and sport industry, and they really promote taking care of yourself. Plus, having a free gym pass to our facility is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've uh, I've lacked the uh, regular exercise, and I yep. think that's helped. Uh, was was that a noise? No, yeah, it was an agreement noise, but it did sound negative. It I apologize. <laughs> 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 Just didn't know how to react to that. I don't. Uh, I was hoping you wouldn't. I think. Yeah, I think. Explain exercise, your pants, please. <laughs> Plays a key part. I think that could be the title. Keeping the demons explain at bay. It could be explain your pants. <laughs> They're my casual grocery store pants. <laughs> it's my too formal. Form, the formal grocery store pants. It's right. when See, when you get up, you're like, oh, we need <laughs> food for breakfast. I'm gonna go to the store, and then I come back, and I'm gonna stay in these pants all day. <laughs> and go dig They're a also hole. Pants that I'll travel into. Because uh, you shouldn't wear jeans when you travel. Oh my goodness. Comfort is is the name of the game. If all you have is semi uncomfortable things, then you're never uncomfortable. Uh, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> that is incorrect. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Nick Sticks, <laughs> Stick Designs. But yeah, we, Ryan mentioned earlier. Wait, going, I wanted like, Marcus to finish his thought. What was the thought? Which thought? Oh, crap. Never mind. All right. <laughs> hashtag update. Um, so, yeah, Ryan, you mentioned earlier going to bed earlier. Mm-hmm. Waking up early or having like a fresh mind for work, it's helped you a lot. Um, I'm I'm still like a stupid teenager where Ryan falls asleep and I'll watch skateboarding videos for an hour beside her. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I do fall asleep probably close to like midnight or something like that, which is fine for me. And then, yeah, so, but I have super notice at not working until 2 a.m. most nights. And then, like you said, like waking up tired and just like always feeling like shit. Yeah. It just... It like helps you relish the moments where you feel good and like chase that feeling more and be like, oh, I'll just go to bed at 11 because if I stay up, I'm just going to watch old Tom Waits videos by myself. I might as well just like not feel like crap tomorrow. It's also not having guilt by going to bed at 830. 
Mm-hmm. And the sun's still out. Is that what you do? Sometimes. Uh, I'm jealous of people who can do that, too. Just because oh. it would be rude to go to bed before the kids. Yeah. After being at work all day, just being home for an hour and being like, well, I'm checking out. I don't <laughs> think they'll think it's, that's rude. You you can't just not see your kids all day. Our kids aren't like no, adults. No, no, but you're home, <laughs> but you're like, I'm very tired. I'm going to bed right now. It's, um, I don't know if it's this, this is a different topic oh, entirely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just about, it's, it goes back to that whole guilt thing and a time management thing. Like, yeah, yeah they're another task to do. Which, much. except for people like Marcus that do not have them yeah. and can go to bed whenever the hell he wants. Yeah. I can sleep also wherever I want. And apparently mm-hmm. he can wear whatever pants he wants. <laughs> he does what he wants. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. his own man. He takes care of his kids if he had them. Which he does. My have. virtual, I take care of my Tamagotchis. Yep. You should, I was going to tell you, you should put batteries in those. <gasps> <laughs> I thought they were all in a coma. <laughs> <Yeah>. Gotcha, <laughs> In a happy coma. Battery-induced coma. <clears throat> so uh, thank you, Nick Stick Designs on Instagram. Um, that kind of sound like Nick's Dick Designs on Instagram, but it's Nick Stick Designs. Nick Stick. Nick Stick. Nick Stick. So are you also picturing a penis moving a mouse around? <laughs> <laughs> sure aren't <laughs> now I so uh yeah um thank you for asking that question anybody uh we post the topics a few days before we record on at worst design show on social media style things so you can follow us on there and and ask a question or tell a fucked up story or do whatever uh we'll read it on the air because um you would think we have little to talk about uh but we do almost a three hour three hour episode every two weeks and we would like to cr- I, I think crack the three hour marker if we had a bunch of questions mm-hmm. nope i don't that was just a joke uh three hours is too long we're at a cool 245 right now uh but yeah so at worst design show on social media uh go to worst to check out uh all the crap we talk about on the show we have links to where you can listen, we have photos of stuff we talked about, videos, links to articles, anything we talked about that I remembered to put a link up about, we put up there. Um, you can also check out our playlist, which I have a feeling this is going to fizzle out. If you're enjoying the playlist, maybe we'll keep doing them, maybe not, but um, there's lots of music out there. Find playlists elsewhere. This is <laughs> this is really just a scheme for me to learn about new music from Marcus. And uh, when I saw a girl from Ipanema, I was like, hey, I know that one. <laughs> and it made me feel... <laughs> so... That's how the song goes. Ryan, do you want to plug any is. of your social media? No. Any of your socials? Jesus what about no. your greasers? No. All right. Um, so, Ryan, at this point in your existence with the job you have and all that, and, and you do care about your job, I see it I every do. day. Why do you care in as few words as possible? Uh. <laughs> that, that'll do it. Yeah. So, thank you again. <laughs> I'm, really I'm too burnt out to answer that question. There right you go. Now. <laughs> so, uh, thank you everybody for listening. We'll be back in an amount of time, two weeks, uh, with the next one. And remember, making pictures for a living ain't that bad. And if you think it is, then you are the worst. Guten Morgen. <laughs>